got milk? Not anymore. Everything is going just as I planned. Soon the entire world will be without dairy milk. No butter on toast, no ice cream, no cheddar cheese, and nothing but dry cereal. Nothing can stop me now. <laughs> Somewhere over the Mediterranean Sea. Would you like our Italian entree, sir? No thanks. It gives me hives. Our vegetarian dinner, then? Nope. Gives me the vapors. Then may I recommend the Greek plate? It's delicious. All right, if you insist. Enjoy. Good to see you, Agent Fox. Ah, Monkey Penny. Now this is a real TV dinner. Right. Yesterday, our spy operatives discovered the factories and offices of Amalgamated Moo Juice Incorporated abandoned and drained of milk. Soon, the entire world's remaining milk reserves will be depleted. The idea of eating dry breakfast cereal is pretty hard to swallow. Yes, it is. Here's the only clue we have. Feta cheese. A low grade, too. Spy operatives took that picture in the office of Mr. Howard Hugh Heffer Utterly III. President and CEO of Amalgamated Moo Juice Incorporated. Exactly. We presume he has valuable information on the dairy crisis. The only available picture of him is hidden in your mashed potatoes. Finding Utterly is your top priority. He shouldn't be hard to spot. The feta cheese samples found in Utterly's office have been traced back to the island of Acidophilus. Your plane will be flying over the island any minute now. I've already set up the mobile command center where you'll rendezvous with me and later on with Quack. The entrance code is in your fortune cookie. Any questions? No, I'm on my way. Good. Monkey Penny, out. <laughs> I wish I hadn't left my parachute in my other tuxedo. Maybe one of my special spy gadgets will help me. I wonder which one I should pick. The one time I don't need a cab. What good is this without helium? Pardon me, that airline food will get you every time. That's certainly not the kind of entrance a super spy like myself normally makes. Hmm, so this is the sleepy little Greek island of Acidophilus. I seem to have arrived unfashionably early, since nothing seems to be open. I should meet up with Monkey Penny at the Mobile Command Center. Five, 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 one, three, nine, four. How fortunate that Monkey Penny gave me this entrance code. It's a photograph of Mr. Utterly. Here's where my notes go. I use the talk balloons to gather information. Here's where my notes go. I use the talk balloons to gather information. Here's where I keep my spy gadgets. Mo Please stand by. Spy Fox, where are you? I'm waiting for you at the Mobile Command Center. Of course you are. I was just doing a little sightseeing, that's all. There'll be time for that later. Now use the spy code and get down here. This is serious. Fun. It's Happy Fun Sub. A little break from the spy biz might do me some good.
It says happy hour 12 to 2. It says Greek cantina. It says trinkets. Your mother must be so proud. Five 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 one three nine four. Five 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 one three nine four. Hello, Spycor Mobile Command Center. Penny, I've got your number. Now that's a person-to-person -person phone call. Glad you could drop in, Spyfox. Hello, Monkey. That's Monkey Penny. So what do you think of Skycorp's new Greek Island Mobile Command Center? Impressive. Disguising it as a half-buried boat in the middle of the town square was a stroke of genius. Nobody would ever notice that. That was Professor Quack's idea. Where is Quack? Oh, he'll be here soon to refill the Spy Gadget vending machine. In the meantime, he sent a couple of things ahead for your mission. Good, because a spy without a gadget is like a shopping cart without a broken wheel. How apt. Now pay attention. This is Greek money. It's called drachmas. You may need to buy a few things around here on the island. And this is a... A toothbrush. And I sure could use one after that airplane meal. Don't put that in your mouth. It's not a regular toothbrush. It's a special laser toothbrush. Let me show you how it works. You hold the laser toothbrush, apply the minty fresh laser gel, push the button, then you can use it to cut through really thick steel. Hmm, I guess that's one way to fight cavities. So, do we have any idea where Mr. Utterly is being held? No solid evidence yet, but you might want to check out that feta factory down by the docks. Feta factory, huh? I thought I smelled something suspicious. If I had the knack, I'd take a crack at giving this empty vending machine a whack and a smack. But I suppose Quack would give me some flack when he gets back to this shack. Professor Quack will fill that vending machine up with spy gadgets as soon as he arrives. So make like a doctor and have some patience. The number you have... The four <laughs> Mind if I take the Asti Spumoni out for a little spin? Sorry, Fox. Quack hasn't had a chance to fix it since you cracked it up escaping from the evil Dr. Maybe. My spy watch is beeping. Spy Fox to Mobile Command Center. Please stand by. Spy Fox here. Hi, Spy Fox. Remember, you can call me via your spy watch anytime for help and information. Just press the mobile command button. Will do. Spy Fox, out. Ah, uh, yes, the high seas, the big blue, La Grande Oceania, the wet desert, Mother Nature's spittoon. If I'm not mistaken, and I rarely am, that stands for Nectar of the Goats, a world-renowned purveyor of goat milk and goat byproducts. 
It says Feta Factory. Uh-oh. Normally, I would karate chop my way right through a door. But this one seems to be made of solid steel. The laser toothbrush makes impervious steel doors pervious. <coughs> now that's a big side of beef. No buts about it. That's Mr. Utterly, all right. And he's dangling over a pool of piranha. Now the question is, how am I going to get his rump roast down from there? Hmm, Ooh. this must be the temperature control for this pool of piranhas. Kind of an odd fixture for a feta cheese factory. The piranha pool seems to be getting colder. The little beasties seem to be slowing down. Hmm, fish on ice. That should hold them. Now for Mr. Utterly. You saved me! Thank you, Mr. Um... Oh. Fox. Spy, Fox. Routine rescue, really? Now I need to get you to our mobile command center for a debriefing. Good! I need to change my pants. <laughs> You've got to stop him, Mr. Fox! All right, just calm down, Mr. Utterly. Why don't you start from the beginning and tell us what happened? Well, it all started as a typical day at the office. When you're as important as I am, you're constantly fielding international cattle calls and reviewing grazing reports. Yep, you have to stay pretty sharp in the dairy biz. Their I immediately snapped into action. There were dozens of them. I fought them hoof and nail. Pow, 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 I did. My whole body is a weapon. Then suddenly, I smelled something revolting. Could only be one thing. Feta cheese! cheese. The stink was so overwhelming that I nearly passed out. Taking advantage of my momentary asphyxiation, kidnappers jumped me and then forced me into a smelly dark bag. They whisked me away to Kid Secret Island Fortress. It was just so humiliating being bagged up like a, like a piece of beef. But were you able to learn anything about what William the Kid is up to? Well, thanks to a little bovine ingenuity on my part, I picked a few things up. Kid's demented scheme for gaining worldwide domination is run by a front company called Nectar of the Goats Corporation. He has a five-part master plan. First, capture all the dairy cows in the world. As you know, he's already done that. Second, he built that milky weapon of destruction inside his secret fortress. Third, use this milky weapon of destruction to flood the capital with none too fresh dairy milk. Fourth, Frame all the poor dairy cows for this heinous crime. Fifth, take over the entire dairy world. Hi, Fox. Someone needs to find that secret fortress and disarm that milky weapon of destruction. Hmm, sounds challenging. I need to find that secret fortress and disarm that milky weapon of destruction. Oh, I almost forgot. When William the Kid's back was turned, I swiped the secret code that turns the milky weapon of destruction off. Good going. Where is it? Uh, well, I had to swallow the code before I could read it so it wouldn't be discovered. Can you believe it? I find the whole thing a little hard to swallow. We need to figure out a way to get a look at that code. Someone needs to find that secret fortress and stop William the Kid. Mm. 
X-ray gum. How does this work, Professor Quack? Ah, oh, that's my new and improved beef flavor X-ray gum. I'll explain how it works. You take a stick out, put it up against something beefy, move it around, and then you can see the yucky stuff inside. The best part of all is, when you are done, you can chew the gum. It actually has a very refreshing, beefy flavor. You know, four out of five dentists prefer x-ray gum for their patients who need x-rays. A duck needs his fiber. What's in this egg-shaped container, Professor Quack? This is a little gadget I call the Spy Putty. What you do is open the cute little egg container and spread the putty on whatever you want to make a copy of. Press down and then peel the putty off. You have a perfect copy. Hmm, that looks rather silly. I know what you're thinking. You think that the spy putty looks a lot like that silly stuff they sell in toy stores. What you don't know is that I thought of it first. Those duplicitous duplicators stole my idea! It appears to be a shoe. What is this gadget, Professor Quack? Oh, that's the night vision shoe. One of my most ingenious inventions. If you happen to find yourself in a dark place, all you do is strap the shoe onto your head, and then you can see in the dark. How illuminating. <laughs> yes, and it has excellent arch support. Mmm, it looks like a delicious snack. May I eat this, Professor Quack? Okay, that's the cheese and safe cracker kit. It will help you to get into almost any safe in the world. I won't explain exactly how it works, because it's very scientific and complicated. Trust me when I say it works like a charm. And it tastes great in soup. <laughs> Yeah, and this paper isn't half bad. I can only carry four spy gadgets at a time. I guess I can put one of mine back. Interesting. Is that an entire jar of trinkets? Yes, my Aunt Alisa pickles them every September. Here's where I keep my spy gadget. I imagine that you get pretty busy during the tourist season. Actually, no. I'd love to take your money, sir, but wouldn't you like to buy something? Of course. What could anyone possibly do with a whole jar of trinkets? It could be a paperweight. You could make a unique lamp out of it. It could be turned on its side to roll out cookie dough. There must be a million and one uses. So, what's a jar of trinkets going for these days? Uh, normally, sir, they're 20 drachmas. But for you, how about 50? Sounds good to me. I'll take it. There you go, sir. Why, thank you. The door's locked. Here's where I keep my spy gadgets. 
It's a night vision shoe. Hi, honey. Welcome to the cantina. I'm Bee Bear. If there's anything I can get you, sugar, like for example, sugar, you just let me know, all right? Thanks, Bee. What's the trophy for? That's my cockadoodle food trophy. I took lessons from Master Hong Kong Thank Doodle, you. at least Next. until I punched his stuffing out. Thursday's special. It says, entertainment, the tango. Honey, after 60 straight days of tangos, it's no longer entertainment. So, you like playing the tango, do you? Oh, yeah. The tango really swings you crazy, cat. Plus, it's the only sheet music I have. How's business been since the milk shortage began? It's been difficult for some of the customers to wean themselves away. But I have a high lactose intolerance, so it hasn't really affected me. That's not going to do me any good. Here's where I keep my spy gadgets. It's a night vision shoe. Greetings. Interested in a little game of go fish, Mr. Fox. Spy Fox. I've been known to play go fish from time to time. And you are? Artemis J. Big Pig. Pleased to make your acquaintance, sir. What do you say we make this game a little more interesting? Would you care to play some trinkets? I just happen to have a whole jar of trinkets. Haha, <laughs> excellent then. I like a fox who is willing to play for trinkets with a pig who likes to play go fish for trinkets. Place your trinkets on the table and we'll get started. Here's where I keep my spy gadget. Here's my spy pu- That's not going to- I can only carry four spy gadgets. Here's where I... That's not going to do me any good. I'm sure glad this spy gadget vending machine doesn't have a no deposit, no return policy. What handsome cufflinks. Are they gadgets as well, Professor Quack? Those are the suction cufflinks. I am very proud of them. They are tiny suction cups that allow you to climb across non-porous metal surfaces. The perfect fashion accessory for the well-dressed spot. Mmm, that was a tasty one. How are the car repairs going? Oh, I'm still waiting for the ejection seat I ordered to arrive. That's quite a nice little toy boat you got there. Is it yours? Oh, yes, sir. And that is why I'm standing out here at this podium on this filthy, seagull-stained dock talking to a sophisticated wannabe like you. So it's not your boat? No. It belongs to my boss. Pardon me, sir, but just where do you think you're going? On board. Sir, you are obviously making a little joke. 
No one but no one is allowed to go on board the SS Deadweight without a gold-edged, wax-sealed, expensively embossed, handwritten invitation. And do you have one of these, sir? Not as such. Then I'm afraid, sir, that you should make like a plane in the Bermuda Triangle and get lost. I can gather information about the deck party with this. What can you tell me about yourself? I'm from a long line of aristocratic rodents. So, why are you a doorman? I enjoy being a doorman, sir. It says deck party, invitation only. Sounds like a swank affair to me. What do you do with your spare time? I teach a cheese tasting course at the local community college. Fascinating. I enjoy dairy cheese myself. Yes, I imagine you'd prefer the dairy variety. What can you tell me about yourself? I'm from a long line of aristocratic rodents. So, why are you a doorman? I enjoy being a doorman, sir. I'm here to sign up for the shuffleboard class that starts in uh, about five minutes. So, you better let me shuffle up the gangplank. Sir, this is a private party for only the most exclusive, important people on the island. And they don't play shuffleboard. Here's where I keep my spy gadgets. That makes the piranha pool hotter. <laughs> the piranha pool can't get any hotter. The piranhas are already sweating, if that's possible. Piranha. I wonder what a South American fish that can eat creatures alive has to do with making cheese. I have a feeling this is no ordinary feta factory. Here's where I keep my spy gadget. Here's my spy putty. Hey, wanna see my tattoo? Wanna see my tattoo? That's not going to do me any good. I think I'll just... Is this coin really a spy gadget, Professor Quack? Ah, that's the spy trap. Let me explain how it works. It looks like an ordinary coin, like you might find in the street. But if you need to trap three or more bad guys, the coin explodes and a net shoots out. It traps the naughty spy enemy. Nice, huh? Heads I win, tail they lose. I'm going to lose my appetite if I keep this up. Here's where... Monkey Penny, do you have any idea how I might get an invitation to the deck party over at the SS Deadweight? I hear it's hard to get even a copy of one. Good luck, Spy Fox.
That's not going to do me any good. This, ah, the water sure looks refreshing. Too bad I'm so busy saving the world, otherwise I'd take a swim. Here's where my notes go. I... What do you do with your spare time? I teach a cheese tasting... Don't know anything about that, but do you want to see my tattoo? I noticed that there was a party going on down on that big ship at the docks. But I understand you can only go if you were invited. That is true. In fact, I am going as soon as I get off work. Oh, so you got an invitation. I certainly did. It is really a fancy schmancy one too. Would you like to look at it? Why yes, I would love to look at it. Here's where I keep... I can't copy the invitation while he's looking right at me, so maybe I can do something to distract him. How much is that cute stuffed kitty you have there? It is a little expensive, sir. But I would be happy to throw in some free stuffed kitty litter. Wait a minute! Is that a genuine Teddy Roosevelt teddy bear? Circa 1902? Yes, they are very rare. It may even be on the endangered antiquities list. those conical, brimless hats called fezzes? If you say so. I've always thought of them as those funny-looking hats worn by old gentlemen driving those small cars in parades. Do you have any bigger fish? You should have seen the one that got away. I would like to return this jar of trinkets for a full refund. Sorry, no refunds. Here's where I keep my spy gadgets. That's not going to do me any good. Here's my spy putty. I'm so impressed that you got an invitation to this fancy deck party. Will you be wearing your tuxedo? No, I have chosen one of my finest all-cotton t-shirts to wear. One that will show off my impressive pectoral muscles. I'm sure. Tell me, what's the difference between a souvenir and a trinket? Souvenir is a French word meaning to remember. Trinket is a Middle English word which means small shoemaker's knife. I hope that clears it up for you, sir. It's dr I'd like to purchase that fine stuffed kitty. All right, I'll get it for you. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Ah! 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 Come on! Ah! Ah! Oh, forget it. I can't sell you that cat. It's still alive. Meow. Did you hear that? Meow. There it was, again. That's not going to do me any good. Not you again! How many times do I have to tell you? This is a private party, and without an invitation, you are not allowed to go on board. Sheesh! The nerve of something. You think they would. Kitty! Let me see that. Signed, Russian Blue. Oh, sir, we are ever so honored to have you on board with us today. Please, feel free to come and go as you wish. Why, thank you. How gracious of you. 
What a weasel. I trust you will have an enjoyable visit. And if there is any way in which I can kiss up some more, sir, I trust you will let me know. But of course. So, oh, this is the deck party. Before I join the festivities, I should let Monkey Penny know I'm here. Spy Fox to Mobile Command Center. Please stand by. Hi, Spy Fox. How's the mission progressing? I just made it onto the SS Deadweight. I'm going to take a look around. Good. Keep your eyes peeled for clues as to where William the Kid's secret fortress is. If Kid's fortress is so secret, how come we know about it? We're spies, Spy Fox. It's our job to know. And we are good at our jobs. Spy Fox out. What do you think you're doing? Nothing, just looking. Hello, you must be... Russian Blue. Noted socialite and attractive owner of the SS Deadway. My name's Fox. Spy Fox. Would you care to dance, Miss Blue? I would love to, Mr. Fox. But there is only one dance on this planet I will dance to. And that is... The Tango. I love the Tango. Do you know why I love the tango, Mr. Fox? That funky beat? Because it takes two to tango. Interesting. I've never done the math on that. I can gather information about Russian Blue with this. about Russian Blue, Maestro. She throws a party like none other. I hear that a good tango puts a spell over her, too. What do you mean? Oh, it's all the rumors, you see. This crowd prefers a waltz anyway. I see. Thank you, sir. It would be very interesting to track Russian Blue's movements. Maybe Monkey Penny has something up her sleeve. Please stand by. Hi, Spy Fox. How's the mission going so far? So far, so good. I was just checking in. We're all fine here. Oh, uh, by the way, don't forget that you need to figure out a way to look at that information Mr. Utterly swallowed. Thanks. I'll come back in later and do that. Monkey Penny, what can you tell me about this Russian Blue I met over on the SS Deadweight? I'm glad you asked. Direct your attention to the screen. Here's what the Spy Corps database has on her. Name, Russian Blue. She also goes by Ms. Blue, Old Blue, and Kitty Kitty Kitty. Occupation, owner and operator of the SS Deadweight. Head of public relations for NOG. Close associate of William the Kid, and one, Bad Kitty. Known felonies? Indecent tangoing. Acquitted. Dancing with intent to tango. Acquitted. J tangoing. Acquitted. Tangoing out of season. Acquitted. Comment. Russian Blue is obviously in cahoots with William the Kid. She's not only very dangerous, but she might be the perfect source of information regarding Kid's whereabouts. Interesting. It sounds like I should keep an eye on her. Better still, why don't you slip one of our tracking bugs into her purse? Then we can trace her movements all over the island. Walter Wireless is ready to go. Hey, Walter. You need Russian Blue followed? I'm your bug. I'm on her like fleas on a dog. Or a cat, as it were. Excellent. Glad to have you aboard, Walt. Hop in.
Mr. Utterly, why did you have to swallow the code in the first place? Couldn't you have put it in your pocket? Oh, I hadn't thought of that. That would have been a lot easier in the end, huh? to distract Russian Blue, so she'll set her purse down first. I've never been involved in a waltz napping before. That's not going to do me any good. That's not going to do me any good. What do you know about Ms. Russian Blue, if I may ask? We maintain a strictly professional relationship. She's my employer, you see? Yes, I realize that. What are her hobbies? Of course, there's always the tango, her passion in life. I need to talk to Monkey Penny about tracking Russian Blue's movements. anything about that, but do you want to see my tattoo? What do you know about Russian Blue? I know that her greatest passion in life is the tango. It virtually puts her into a trance. That's why I'm taking tango lessons. I see. Hey, what would you think about playing something a little slower for a change? Like I told you, man, I would if I could. So... Unless you've got some new sheet music for me, the tango extravaganza continues. Would you trade me some of your tango music for some of this waltz music? Would I? I've been dying for some new tunes. Thanks. No, no, no. Thank you, Mr. Too Cool for a Foxy White Suit Jacket Guy. You are beautiful, baby. Don't go changing. Nah. Give this gentle fox a Brussels sprout soda and put it on my tab rooney sweet. You don't have a tab, Johnny. Too bad. Encore! Encore! <laughs> Hmm, I guess you can teach old dogs new tricks. Now 
I see why she likes the tango so much. I need to distract Rush. That's not. I thought that would get him to change his tune. I love to tango, but now I must attend to some important business. Thank you for the divine tango, Miss Blue. I better answer my spy watch. It could be about my dry cleaning. Please stand by. Hello, Monkey Penny. What's up? Spy Fox, one of our informants, Mata Harry, has turned up some vital information you may need to complete your mission. Rendezvous with her in front of the Nectar of the Goats factory door. We interrupt this program to bring you a special spy report. Let's go to a close-up for this one, Steve. This is Walter Wireless, your undercover tracking bug, coming to you live inside the purse of Russian Blue. Just moments ago, Russian Blue ran off her boat, jumped in her sports car, and sped out of the parking lot. Do you have any idea where she's headed? We are presently speeding down what feels like a winding paved road towards an unknown location. We have just taken a sharp left, now a right. She is driving like a wildcat. I'll bring you more on this breaking story as it... Wait a minute, the car seems to be slowing down. Yes, it's come to a complete stop. I can't tell what's happening yet. Hang on. Oh no, my cover has been compromised. Mayday, mayday. For SpyCore News, this is Walter Wireless signing off. Did you see that, Monkey Penny? I sure did. You better see if you can pick up his trail. Professor Quack finished his repairs on your car. I'll have it waiting for you in the town square, just behind the mobile command center. You better hurry, Spy Fox. Walt was one of our best field bugs. And don't forget about meeting up with the informant, Mata Harry, by the Feta factory. I'm in there like swimwear. Spy Fox, out. I hope I can keep my stomach down. I need to follow the trail Walter left for me on the spy radar.
was probably a nice place until someone came along and ruined it. I'm right over here, Spy Fox. Walter, what happened? Where did Russian Blue go? Sorry, Spy Fox. My cover was compromised. I thought I was going to get squashed there for a second, but luckily she dropped me and ducked into a secret passageway. I need to bug out of here. She mentioned something about an exterminator, and I don't have my gas mask. Yeah, you'd better get going. Thanks for your help, Walt. My pleasure. Until next time, this is Walter Wireless signing off. And that's the way it is. That's odd. The Greeks didn't use hieroglyphics. Wait a second. I recognize it now. It's the ancient hieroglyphic language of the infamous Minoan Musaka cult. My Musaka hieroglyphic reading is a little rusty, but I know I can figure this out. This symbol stands for happy. Well, that didn't work. This symbol means fat. Here's where my notes go. I use the talk balloons to gather information. Here's where I keep my spy gadgets. That's not going to do me any good. I'm not going anywhere until I solve this ancient mystery. Those are the suction cufflinks. Hey, according to SpyCore's database, William the Kid has three overdue library books. I always suspected Kid had some latent criminal tendencies. Here's where I keep my spy gadget. Here's where I keep my spy gadget. Even bleach wouldn't make this symbol any brighter. This one means white. This hieroglyphic means black. That's not going to do me any good. Please stand by. Spy Fox, 
I'm glad you checked in. I just heard from our informant, Mata Harry. She's wondering where you are. Oh, right. Is she still waiting for me by the dock? Yes, but she says she's getting a little drained. Please hurry. The Mediterranean Sea. Too bad there isn't a boat for me to rent for a little cruise around the island. Have you ever thought of recording an album? Yes, I'm in the final stages of negotiation with a major label to record a collection of wagtime songs. It's just a matter of days until we wet the papers. That's not going to do me any good. Here's where I keep my spy gadgets. That's not going to do me any good. The, the, the seas look calm today. That's good. I hate it when they're nervous. According to SpyCore's database, William the Kid has three... Hey, according to... That door is still locked. Please stand by. Spy Fox, I'm glad you checked in. I just heard from our informant, Mata Harry. She's wondering where you are. Oh, right. Is she still waiting for me by the docks? Yes, but she says she's getting a little drained. Please hurry. Mobile Command Center. Here's where I keep my spy gadget. Mata pudding. Someone once said, the secret to life is making I just too bad caviar is made otherwise. It would be really Mata Harry is probably wondering why I haven't shown up yet. I shouldn't keep her waiting. I can't wait to get out there and butt heads with this fiendish goat.
bonjour, monsieur. So good to see you again. By the way, I do hope you would agree, sir, that nothing I said to you earlier would... Hey, wanna see my tattoo? I imagine that you get pretty busy. So, is the food here any good? Well, between you and me... That's not going to do me any good. 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 I can only carry... That's not going to do me any good. That's not going to do me any good. Nothing like reason. Excuse me, Professor, but... That's the X-ray gum. Here's where I keep... Now, if you don't mind, Mr. Utterly, I'm going to need to use this X-ray gum to take a look at those four stomachs of yours. This isn't going to hurt, is it? Because I get kind of dizzy when I think about pain. In fact, just saying the word pain makes me want to... Oh, Professor Quack, your x-ray gum works perfectly. I can see everything inside Mr. Utterly's gut. If I had a wrench in me, I would wretch. His ticker looks like it needs winding. I found the note. I'll be able to disarm that milky weapon of destruction with that diode. I just need to find it, then figure out where to place it. Without that diode, I won't be able to disarm the milky weapon of destruction. I've got to look for that diode. William the Kid must be stopped. Here's where I keep my spy gadget. Bad guys are m The raid in Spain stays mainly on the plane. Because the drain in Spain is clogged up with grain. Hello, Agent Fox. Hi, Mata Harry. What do you have for me? I intercepted what I think may be some sort of coded password, but I have no idea what it means. I'm sure it's important, though. All right, let's hear it. It goes like this. The strong, skinny girl. What a curious phrase. <whistles> I'm sure you'll figure it out, Agent Fox. You always do. That's true, I do. All right, I gotta go chase down another lead. Ta-ta! Thanks, Mata. A hiding place like that must be really draining for her. Ah. 
The strong skinny girl. The strong, the strong skinny girl. This symbol means girl. This hieroglyphic reminds me of the smell of feta cheese. It's strong. This is what I hope William the Kid turns out to be. Weak. It will be easy to get the skinny on this hieroglyphic. It means skinny. Looks like this secret passage isn't so secret anymore. Curious. Could there really be a plumbing problem in Kid's Fortress? Maybe the water isn't too deep. Ah! Voracious snapping turtles! With a taste for fox, I'd wager. I think I'd better think of a way across that'll keep me from being turtle food. Here's where I keep my spy gadgets. It's a spy trap. That's not going to do me any good. Maybe I can scale this wall to get to the other side. These suction couplings should help me form a closer attachment to this wall. If they think I'm all washed up, they've got another thing. This is no time. my suction cufflinks here in case I need to make a fast getaway later. I'd better let Monkey Penny know I made it inside Kid's Secret Fortress. Spy Fox to Mobile Command Center. Please stand by. Spy Fox, I'm glad you checked in. How's it going? Smooth. As smooth as sandpaper underpants. I just got into Kid's Secret Fortress. Excellent. Now you've got to disarm that milky weapon of destruction. I'm in there like swimwear. Spy Fox, out. That thing is not only giving me the eye, it gave me the boot. I'd better look for a uniform. Interesting. This looks like some sort of locker room for kids' evil minions. It's 
a secret passageway. What a clever secret entrance. William the Kid can go from the town square to his secret fortress anytime he wants. Grande Fromaggio? Oh right, Italian for the big cheese. How droll. I'd better leave this door unlocked, in case I need to get back in here later. I wonder what this diagram is for. It looks strangely significant. A yellow jumpsuit. I'll bet this is the official Nectar of the Goat uniform. No one would recognize me in one of these. That's not going to do me any good. Uh-oh, someone's coming. I'd better hide. So that's the dastardly William the Kid that everyone's so worked up about. Ms. Blue, take this diode and put it back where it belongs. It's the only thing that can disarm my milky weapon of destruction now. So, keep it safe. Right away, your Imperial Goatness. I've deposited the money in your bank account. Thanks for all your help. It's a pleasure doing business with you. Call me anytime. I need to get my hands on that diode he mentioned. This looks exactly like that diagram over in the locker room. Now I need to move these levers to the positions shown in the diagram. I'll just keep getting knocked off if I don't get all those conveyor belts moving. This must be where William the Kid keeps his controls for the milky weapon of destruction. I should let Monkey Penny know I've made it here. Spy Fox to Mobile Command Center. Please stand by. Spy Fox, good to hear from you. What's up? I'm in William the Kid's control room. The launching panel for the Milky Weapon of Destruction is right here. Great. Now, all you have to do is find the missing diode so you can disarm that Milky Weapon of Destruction. Right. That shouldn't be too difficult. Spy Fox out. I need to get that diode in this control panel in order to disarm Kid's Milky Weapon of Destruction. I've been itching to take this jumpsuit up. I get... If I don't rip... This must be some sort of tram to take people around in Kid's Fortress. Oh, this must be Kid's secret volcano office. 
I should take a look around. Nope, nope, nope. is quite a long corridor. Oh, pardon me. I didn't know anyone was in here. What are you doing in here? This room has restricted access. I'm just taking a look around. Routine inspection. Diode. Don't touch them. The shock of one of those diodes would fry you into a smoking pile of charcoal briquettes. And everybody knows that foxes don't smoke. Keeping this place humming is an extremely demanding and stressful job. Apparently, you don't understand the consequences if I were to let the power go out. No, but I'd love to find out. It says, no entry. Here's where I keep my spy gadget. There must be a shorter way to get to that radio room. Interesting. All these hyperactive gerbils must be the power source of kids' evil machinery. William the Kid has some empowering employees. What? The power went out. Those greedy gerbils and their carrots drive me batty. Now I have to walk all the way down that long corridor. This lever seems to be a gerbil on and off switch. The perfect shoe for someone already so light on their toes. With the power off, it's safe to snatch a diode. But which one do I need? The power's on again. I should take this silly looking shoe off before someone sees me. It looks like a billboard. disarm the milky weapon of destruction until I put the diode into this control panel. I hope this is the right diode. Once again.
again, I've saved the world from a horrible, or in this case, smelly, fate. Now I need to go get that goat. Not so fast, my crafty friend. You may think you have outfoxed me by disarming my milky weapon of destruction. But I'm afraid it's too late to save your precious cows. It's over, Billy. Give yourself up. Don't ever call me Billy. It's William. And it's not over yet, my foxy nemesis. When I pull this lovely lever, the cow's stables will become completely flooded with milk. And that will be the end of the dairy world as we know it. That's the most despicable thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Man, this is really rich. Kid, you're kidding yourself if you think I'm going to let you get away with this. It's too late. And now, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Fox, I have a flight to catch on my giant metallic getaway blimp where I will implement my plan to take over the world, filling it with my delicious goat byproducts. Delicious? You must be insane. Insane, you say? You're the crazy one, if you think you can save the cows. Adios, Mr. Fox. And good luck finding this secret passageway to the stables. You'll need it. Stupid door. Thanks for leaving a little clue, kid. Now all I have to do is find that ascot. Kid's ascot. This must be the secret passageway to the stables where Kid is holding the cows. I'd better hurry. That is one big chicken. Hello there, puny puppy-like creature. You are probably intimidated by my rippling muscles. Do you happen to know the ways of a cockadoodle foo warrior? Cockadoodle foo, you say? It sounds familiar. I can use this to gather information about cockadoodle foo and that funky chicken. your trinkets on the table and we'll get started. Now I can talk to Mr. Big Pig about some of the folks I've met on the island. Do you know anything about cockadoodle foo? No, but I've seen Bee use it more than once to bounce some troublemakers out of the cantina. I hear she's an expert. With the power off, it's safe to snatch a diode. Well, sir, if anyone does, it will be her. Just take a look at her. Have you seen B use her cockadoodle foo on anybody? Hmm, I haven't moved from this chair in almost seven years. I've seen B do all sorts of things. I'm going to take a little break. Certainly, sir. I'll be right here. 
B, do you know anything about cockadoodle foo? Well, I dabbled in a professional career as a cockadoodle foo fighter for a few years. Everything I learned came from a book. A book? Yeah, you can have it if you're interested. It's all too violent for me now. I've moved to a more spiritual phase of life. <laughs> Thanks, B. You may have just saved the planet from this dairy drought. You're a superstar. You... All right, my little furball, now try the cinnamon twist on for size. This cockadoodle foo book from B should help me defeat that funky chicken. Okay, let me see. I need a break from this king-sized clucker, but I'll be back. Alright, my little furball, now try the dancing egg beater on for size. Okay, let me see. This pose might be better than the last one. Alright, Doodle, I'm going to counter that with nobody home. What? What happened? Didn't think I could beat you, huh? Well, I'd stay and toy with you longer, but it looks like you're all tied up. Wait a minute! How about two out of three falls? No, let's make it best of seven. You can't leave me like this. Cockatoodaloo. The kidnapped dairy cows. I've found them. Hang on, everyone. My name is Spy Fox, and I'll rescue you shortly. Continue treading milk, and I'll be right there. I hereby declare you free-range cows. Spy Fox. But you're wrong. Go ahead. Free the cows this time. But I'll be back to milk the world yet again. <laughs> Not so fast, kid. The last thing the world needs is another escaped goat. I'll get that, William the Kid, next time. Later that day. For outstanding heroism and suaveness, I award you, Spy Fox, the Little Daddy Congressional Cookie of Justice. Why, thank you, Mr. President. If only I could have brought that dastardly William the Kid to justice. I'm confident that you'll nab that villain next time. Three cheers for Spy Fox. I've got my cookie. Has anyone got milk?
Somewhere in the Alps. So, Agent Gracefully, you're part of our spy exchange program from Canada? Try not to say my name too often. I'm trying to travel incognito. Actually, you're traveling in the Alps. What do you have there? I got something very important out of a smelly trash can. Well, of course it's smelly if you got it out of a trash can. You need a hobby. No, not smelly. Smelly! As in the society of meaningless evil larceny lying and yelling. Of course, our evil nemesis. Spy fact, you've got to get this trash bag to Spy Corps headquarters. No, I've got a better idea. I'd better get this trash bag to Spy Corps headquarters. Oh, and take this gadget from Professor Quack. You may need it. What is it? Dehydrated skis. Inside of this little pill is a pair of skis. All you have to do is add water. And pray tell, why would I need a pair of skis? I came to get information, not recreation. You may need them to get away from those bad guys. Good luck, spy Fox. <laughs> bad guys? Got water? to get out of here. Although this would be a nice getaway cottage, I've got to get this bag to Spy Corps headquarters. Here's where I keep my spy gadgets. Here's where my notes go. I use the talk balloons to gather information. Here's where my notes go. I use the talk balloons to gather information. Oh, things from space.
It's a bucket of water. If I had skis on, I could show those goons why I won the SpyCore Freestyle Ski Jump Competition. Water, work your magic. The dehydrated skis are now rehydrated. Feet don't fail me now. Skis, I mean. I wonder which way I should go. Which way should I go? Here goes. You miss me, Chief? So you've analyzed the trash bag, I see. And what have you found? It's a model box 1,000 scale for one evil robot. On the side, it says, Some Assembly Required. Sounds like an excellent title for one of my adventures. It has a mailing label that reads, To La Roche, Care of Chateau La Roche, World's Fair. Hmm. Inside the box are assembly instructions. You'd better take these with you, Spy Fox. Wow! You can learn a lot by reading. If Smelly is involved, they must be up to their usual no goodness. You'd best go check out this World's Fair. Monkey Penny and Quack have already set up the mobile command center. I'm on my way, Chief. <laughs> Spy Fox, are you okay? Shaken but not stirred, Monkey Penny. So it looks like we're on to something big. Yes, I think Smelly is up to some monkey business, Monkey Penny. And it looks like it's up to you, me, and Professor Quack to get to the bottom of it. Well, you and me anyway, Monkey Penny. I brought the assembly instructions I got out of the Smelly trash bag. Well, of course it's Smelly if you got it out of a trash bag, Spy Fox. No, Monkey Penny, not Smelly. Smelly, as in the Society for Meaningless Evil Larceny Lying and Yelling. Our evil nemesis. Why don't you leave those assembly instructions here with me? Then you can refer to them whenever you're back here at the Mobile Command Center. And remember, you can contact me via your spy watch at any time. Don't forget to check out the spy vending machine, Spy Fox. It's full of new gadgets for you to try out. I'm sure you'll find some of them quite useful. Thanks. Now I need to go get busy and go give that LaRoche up a Chateau LaRoche a visit and find out just what he's up to. This is a rather cool looking device. What is it? One of those novelty gadgets that lets you see what you'll look like in 50 years? It's an ID maker. Of my own creation, of course. It's for making identification cards. Fascinating. How does it work? You place a photo in the photo slot, choose an occupation, and any name you like, then press the Process ID button. A completed ID will pop out of the machine. Professor, you're amazing. What if I made an ID, but then I change my mind and want to make a different one? Well, if you don't like the ID you created, you could make another card. Just reset the name and occupation. Insert a new photo, then press the Process ID button again. That sounds like fun. Creating false ID cards is something only secret agents can do. And then only when we're on a case. Right! It's 
says World's Fair Entrance. Are you happy with your job as a service guard? Oh yes, quite happy, thank you. Although, I'd rather be enjoying the quiet safety of skydiving, as long as it doesn't get me in touch with nature, without a parachute. Hmm, the entrance is closed and it's locked up tighter than an impervious steel door. Excuse me, sir. What seems to be the problem? Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad tidings, but unfortunately, I cannot allow you to enter through the surface entrance. I'm sorry, but I can only let waitresses with proper ID in today. See? It has the job title of waitress and a matching photo. I seem to have lost my ID. Can you let me in without one? I feel your pain, sir. Really, I do. Unfortunately, Seems that I'll have to find a way to get the proper ID. A free photo booth. Just one of the many joyous pleasures in life. It says free photos. Hmm? Well, I'm certainly in disguise. Excellent! The photo's in place. Perfect. Waitress. Rudy. Carlton. Muriel. Nancy. Ross. Maurice. <laughs> Professor Quack's machine works perfectly. My identification card is complete. I expect that this will come in quite handy. Here you are, kind sir, my ID card. Oh, I'm so happy for you. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, sir. The picture is incorrect on your ID card. It seems that this is one of your old ID cards, perhaps when you worked for a different company. I'm afraid I can only allow waitresses to go through the service entrance. I hope you understand. Waitress. I look ridiculous. With the photo in place, I can now make a new ID card. Here's my ID card. Well, that's great. Oh, I feel so bad for having to do this, sir. The picture is incorrect on your ID card. It's an ID card with a... 
there you go. That's my ID card. Oh, I'm so happy for you. I'm sorry, sir. This is the part of my job that I dislike so much. The picture is incorrect on your ID card. It seems that this is one of your old ID cards, perhaps from a previous job at a different company. I'm afraid I... Dentist. Frank. A re... Dentist. Frank. Up. No. Dentic. France. It's off to the recycle bin for the photo already in the photo slot. That's not really my best son. Excellent! The photo's in place! Hmm, I already have an ID card. I don't really need two. I know! I'll just recycle the old card and keep this one instead. I expect that this will come in quite handy. Hmm. Here you are, sir. One waitress ID card. Oh my, I'm so happy that you were able to find it. Let me guess, it was in your other pants, wasn't it? Why, yes it was. You must be psychic. If you'll excuse me, I'm late for work and they need me in the restaurant. Oh, I understand. I won't keep you any longer. I'll just keep your ID on file for you, Maurice. Keep up the good work. Have a spectacular day. And if I don't see you tomorrow, What's the most challenging part of being a chef? Trying to blend in. Stir, stir, stir. That's a great looking oven. May I try it, please? Sorry? Insurance regulations strictly prohibit the use of this oven by anyone other than a trained chef. You don't look anything like a chef. Someone's in the kitchen with Tyna. Ah, Napoleon LaRoche. I should have known you'd taken up with the likes of Smelly. So Spycore has sent the famous Spy Fox to try and stop my plans for world domination. World domination? Er, uh, of course. Ha! Ah, since you are one of the few people who could possibly understand my genius, I will explain my entire plan to you in nauseating detail. You see, I reversed the scale on the smelly evil dog bot assembly instructions. I've created a 1000 to 1 scale fully functioning evil dog bot. Just where do you think you can hide such a monstrosity? You silly spy. You're standing in it. Of course, you've disguised the evil dog bot as the centerpiece for the World's Fair. Complete with a revolving restaurant. One has to eat, no? Observe the means to my world domination. People buying tickets for the World's Fair do not realize that as they file through the turnstile, they are unwittingly winding the highly advanced clockwork mechanism within the evil dog bot. When the one millionth person has filed through, the dog bot, now wound to maximum capacity, will embark upon its horrifying rampage of destruction! <laughs> Once I have unleashed the dog bot, all the world's leaders will sit up and beg for mercy! It is unstoppable! It cannot be called off, because it has no off switch! Yes, I have removed the off switch and hidden it somewhere in the world's fair! So cleverly, so subtly, that you will never find it! That's what you think, LaRoche! 
Even if you did find the off switch, you would still need the activation code to turn the switch off. And even if you had the off switch and the activation code, you could never hope to get past the diabolically clever security device located in the evil dogbot's Achilles heel, which is the only way into the dogbot's inner workings. It is hopeless, Monsieur Le Fox. There's no way you can beat me! <laughs> You'll never get away with this, LaRoche. Oh, I think I will. And now, Monsieur the Spy Fox, I do. <laughs> Judging by those monstrous metallic molars, I've been imprisoned in the dog bot's mouth. How humiliating. I must find a way out of this cell so I can stop that evil roach. If I could only reach that fire escape through these teeth! I can gather information about La Roche with this talk balloon. La Roche's goons didn't follow the assembly instructions close enough. They seem to have left a few gears missing out of this contraption. This gear must go somewhere in here. This gear is too small. This gear is too big to go there. I wonder where this gear goes. This gear is too small. This gear is too big to go there. This gear is too big to go there. I bet this loose gear is supposed to go somewhere. That did the trick! Well, I guess it's like they say. The tooth shall set you free. Talk about escaping by the skin of your teeth. Now to stop La Roche and his evil plans for world domination. My spy watch is beeping. I'd better answer it. Please stand by. Spy Fox, Agent Walter Wireless has intercepted a microfish message from Dotty Dash. Where's it coming from? It sounds like it's coming from an exhibit called We World. We World, eh? Sounds silly. The message is staticky, and Walter Wireless needs to get closer to hear it. You can pick him up here at the Mobile Command Center. By the way, I've recorded Napoleon LaRoche's evil plans, and I'm sending them to you via the Spy Watch. I look forward to hearing the dish. Monkey Penny, out. Is this Plat World? Correct, my dear. I am Madam Ladybug, the slightly irritated owner of Plant World. Instead of the beauteous red rose I ordered, I have been sent a mutant Venus flytrap by Napoleon LaRoche. Nice cage, though. A locked cage for which I have no combination. On top of it all, this particular Venus flytrap has something in its mouth. Interesting. It's the off switch. How diabolical of LaRoche to feed it to a mutant Venus flytrap. I've got to get it out of there and find a rose for the ladybug. No small feat. I can use this talk balloon to gather information about getting a rose for Madame Ladybug. <laughs> what can you tell me about Napoleon LaRoche? He delivered this mutant Venus flytrap to me instead of my rose. Now why do you suppose he would do that? I imagine it is because of his evil nature. It's some kind of combination lock for this display cage. I'd better answer my spy watch. Please stand by. Spy Fox, an informant has a hot tip about the off switch and is waiting for you at the Food of the Future exhibit. Ask for the candy apple. The candy apple. Got it, thanks. Monkey Penny signing off. Spy Fox out.
I like applesauce, don't you? We don't have applesauce on the stick anymore, honey. It kept sliding off. Although that looks scrumptious, I think I'll pass right now. Do you know where I could get a rose for the nice ladybug? I noticed a rosy smell near the ice skating rink. Thank you. What can you tell me about Napoleon La Roche? All he talked about was the botanical exhibit he was about to see at Plant World. Probably because the plants are shorter than he is. Welcome to you home. Where well, you, you get, get two, 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 for the, the price, price of one. one. <laughs> Stereo Sheep. I'm Doll, and I'm Lee. Hello, Dollar. So nice to have you back where you belong. Something seems fishy. Cod, bear your soul. Oh, I'm sadder than an ant in the neck brace at a picnic. In the old days, it never failed. The Cape Cod would razzle and dazzle with his mighty cape of joy, and then the finale. A shot out of the cannon. Sounds exciting. Then, one fateful day, we were at a sea monkey convention, and my assistants Goldie and Blow were setting up my act. My lucky clear goggles were misplaced, and in their stead was a pair of dark goggles. So what you're saying is that you need your lucky clear goggles? You ever try to steer yourself with dark goggles after you've been shot out of a cannon, son? Not lightly, no. Well, it's impossible to see the target. How about lending me your dark goggles? Since I don't have my lucky clear goggles, I need something to wear for my act. Even though these ones are so dark, I keep missing the target. What's this? It looks like a pair of binoculars. Hmm. Whatever that thing is, it's letting that bad guy type with the glasses on into the evil dog bot's Achilles heel. It looks like some kind of breath analyzer. There's too much of a rose tint on that screen to make out what breath it's showing. Roach must spend an enormous amount of money on evil dogbot food.
That's the 1996 Big Pig Biathlon Cup, given to the couple who can play goat fish while ice dancing. It seems Mr. Big Pig has won every year since it began. I had no idea he was so graceful. Do you ever think about how many candles you could make if you melted the wax figures? Don't even joke about that. This is my profession you're talking about. It says 80 degrees. That's quite a thermometer. Yes, I have to keep a very keen eye on it. If it goes above 80 degrees, the wax figures will start to melt. Then I'll have to run to the phone to call the air conditioning repair place. They put me on hold for hours. It's terribly boring. I can't imagine. go in. The Wax Museum is not open yet. Would you believe me if I told you that I had my own television show on public access called Entering the Wax Museum? Yes, but you may not go in. And don't stand in front of that thermometer. I have to keep a close eye on it. What's the best part of this job? I don't know. I never give it much thought. Thinking hurts the brain, laddie. I think I understand. Hey, hands off those keys. Those keys are to all the exhibits at the fair. No one can touch them but me. The door is locked. <coughs> Is it true that the word souvenir is from the French, meaning the act of remembering? Well, I don't really, eh... Uh, well, I'm not sure I seem to have forgotten. What can you tell me about that trophy? You don't want to hear about that. Well, all right. If you... It was back in my younger days, as the masked Chivere. I used to cut up the ice as a famous ice skater. There, sir. You have a stamp on your hand? No, I can't say that I do. I better stamp your hand so you can get back into the fair. There you are, sir. Have a nice day. Thank you. That's not going to do me any good. Do you know what I wanted to be before I became a spy? No, Spy Fox. What did you want to be? A curtain salesman, but I could never get the hang of it. I bet these are cool. Spy skates, they look sharp, Professor Quack. How do they work? I've always loved the grace and beauty of figure skating. But, being in the spy biz never left time for the years of training, so I created these. You simply slip them on and insert a diagram of the skate maneuver you want to perform, and voila! The skates, with you in them, perform it perfectly. Well, those could sure help to put the villains on ice. Ah, right, Spy Fox. I like these new blueberry-flavored blueprints. That's not going to do me any good. What else can you tell me about... Have you been giving massages for very long? Most of them are pretty short. That's good. Ouch! Oh yeah, your tension is just dissolving away. Here's where I keep... 
Well, that's not going. That's not going to do me any good. That won't do me any... You seem a little bitter. The kids today have no memory of the great skaters. Remember Peggy Hamill and her camel belly lux? No, I don't. Neither do I. A nice ladybug would really like a rose. Do you think I could have one of yours to give her? I'm sorry, but I can only give out a rose when an ice skater performs a perfect single snow boot. I can gather information about the single snow boot ice skate move with this talk balloon. What do you know about the single snow boot ice skating move? You look tense. Let me give you a massage. I tell you, kiddo, I did the single snow boot as the masked she bear. In fact, that skating move is fully illustrated in the latest edition of the bi-monthly magazine Skaters Weekly in a color diagram and everything. Color diagram? May I have that? It's all yours, sweetie. Thanks. That won't do me any good. That's not going to do me any good. You seem a little bitter. The kids today have no memory of the great skaters. Remember Peggy Hamill and her camel belly lux? No, I don't. Neither do I. That won't do me any good. That won't do me any good. That won't do me any good. I need ice skates. I don't want my tootsies to get cold. That's not going to do me any good. Here's where I keep my spy. Now I'm set to show off the moves I've learned in the Spy Ice Follies. That's not going to do me any good. This should do the trick. I was so good, I burned the skates out. Oh well, I don't need them anymore. You did it, kid! I haven't seen a move like that since Sonya Henpeck! Thank you. What a perfect red rose. Madame, would this rose be suitable? I thank you. Now, if I could only open that display cage, I would replace that mutant flytrap with this beautiful rose. Sadly, however, I was not given the combination. I see. But you can still have the flytrap. Houdini, I'm not. I'll have to find the combination to that locked display cage.
That won't do me any good. May I clone something? What shall we clone? Our paycheck. No, really. The cloning machine can only replicate food items. You seem like a card that's down on his luck. That bad guy put on those glasses, breathed on that breath device, and the secret door opened. That must be the secret door La Roche mentioned that leads to the inner workings of the evil dogbot. I need to figure out how to get in there. These rose-tinted glasses might come in handy. I can't see what that evil person ate. I need to be higher up to look over that bad guy's shoulder. <laughs> the Achilles heel door is locked up tight. Wearing these rose-colored glasses all over the fair will give me a headache. That won't do me any good. Say, Mobile Command Center. Please stand by. Have you talked to your informant yet, Spy Fox? I have yet to get the candy apple or talk to the informant. How will I know who I'm talking to? Just get the candy apple. Big things come in small packages. Hmm, the candy apple. I'm not sure what you're talking about, but hmm. Monkey Penny, out. So that's my contact, eh? Brilliant disguise. I'd like a candied apple, please. Certainly, sir. Here at Food of the Future, all food is on sticks. It allows you to enjoy your favorite foods without using a knife or fork or having to stop what you're doing. Here you go, a free candied apple on a stick sample. Well, I have the candied apple. Isn't that just grand? Yes, but I, meaning me, have in my possession the candied apple. Only one candied apple sample per customer. Now run along and enjoy the fair, Pumpkin. Maybe she wants me to come back when there are less people around. Oh well, this candied apple looks good. Watch what you're doing! You wanna give me a coronary? Ah, Lenny! You're the apple of my eye. What information do you have for me? Hi, Spy Fox. Listen close. <laughs> There are spies everywhere, so don't look directly at me. This leaf contains the information that you need. This is too small to read. What do you want from me? I wrote it with my teeth. Now I've got to split. People are starting to stare. Throw me in the dumpster. Suit yourself. Oh! I'm all right. Save yourself.
That looks delicious, but I'm not hungry right now. That's not going to do me any good. How do things stand, Spy Fox? Well, I need to get the off switch and the off switch activation code. Persistence is the key. You can do it, Spy Fox. That won't do me any good. That's not going to do me any good. A stealth back. How does it work? You just hook up the handy nozzle, then press vacuum to suck up the particles into the handy travel bag. Or press reverse back to blow the particles housed in the travel bag back out through the nozzle attachment. And it does it all in perfect silence. Ingenious, Professor Quack. I'd prefer those between two slices of bread, but when duty calls, It's the stealth back. Here's where my notes go. I... That's not going to do me any good. Go right in, Maurice. Roach must really be into Venus flight traps to keep one locked up in Plant World and one by his side. The door is locked. Now please stand by. How's life, Spy Fox? Well, I got the candy apple, but Agent Lenny gave me a code that's too small to read. Maybe it's too late to shape an opinion. Open your mind. Monkey Penny, out. Good thing I like riddles or this could be frustrating. Mobile Command Center. Please stand by. How's life, Spy Fox? Well, I got the candy apple, but Agent Lenny gave me a code that's too small to read. Maybe it's too late to shape an opinion. Open your mind. Monkey Penny, out. Good thing I like riddles or this could be frustrating. That won't do me any good. That's not going to do me any good.
by heat. This looks like some hot work. How does this gadget work, Professor Quack? Now this gadget, I'm really proud of. You can spray it on something, say like a thermometer, and watch the temperature rise right before your eyes. Now that's a gadget that really rises to the occasion. You can say that again. All right. Now that's a gadget that really rises to the occasion. Hmm. Light on the palate, rough on the tummy. A spy key replicator can. What's the key to this gadget, Professor Quack? That's a one-shot camera, like no other in the world. It's specifically made for replicating keys. You take a picture of the key you want to replicate, then bake it in an oven. The picture shrinks down and hardens into an exact duplicate of the key you took the picture of. It can only hold one picture at a time. But you can take a picture over another picture. If you bake a picture into the wrong key, just insert the key back into the camera and it will turn back into key film. I'm sorry, what did you say? Don't worry, it's a point and shoot easy bake gadget. It's a good thing I need my fiber. A termite grenade. I'm sure this gadget isn't bug-free, Professor Quack. How does it work? You've got to be careful with this one, Spy Fox. Toss it at something made of wood and get out of the way. It's good for one serious pulping. That's not something you want laying around the house. Not unless you're good friends with a carpenter. These blueprints are an acquired taste I haven't acquired yet. Here's where I keep my Just watch this spy heat the join up with a demo of his spy heat. Excuse me, but the temperature has gone up well over 80 degrees. Oh no! I must call the air conditioning repair place! Oh dear, I'll be on hold for hours. That spy heat certainly was the hot ticket. George Washington Cougar, an inventor who found 101 uses for gelatin. Gelatin sneakers, gelatin tires, and gelatin bricks. They don't last, but the inventions look cute when they wiggle. Ah, St. Joan of Bark. She made sure that every child in the world had access to ice cream. She became the patron saint of cold cows. Thomas Elephant, inventor of the mesh umbrella, light bulbs painted black, and shoes made out of bubble gum. Gum shoes. After playing in them all day, you could have a stinky snack. Bella a Buck, who worked hard for roaches' rights. She worked hard for better housing for roaches who wanted to escape those deadly hotels. Bert Barracuda, a successful songwriter who wrote such pop standards as Do You Know the Way to Swim Upstream? And my personal favorite, What's It All About Algae? Wolfgang Duck. An innovative chef known for his imaginative pairings of fresh local ingredients with his own version of what's tasty today. I like to cook, and I'm an imaginative fox. A chef outfit just might come in handy.
An alarm deactivator. What in the world could this gadget be used for? Well, it's used to turn off alarms. You attach one end to where the alarm signal is coming in, and then attach the other end to where the alarm signal is going out. The alarm signal is then redirected harmlessly into the alarm deactivator, keeping the alarm from going off. It just looks like a wire with two alligator clips on either end. Yes, it's beautiful in its simplicity, isn't it? I once printed these on exploding paper, but man, did those cause heartburn. Here's where I keep my spy gadgets. I wonder which key I should take a picture of. Key four. Right in, Marie. Stop to the stir, stir, stir. Ahem. Oh. oh, excuse me. I didn't see you come in, Chef Wolfgang. What a pleasant surprise. Well, I was in the neighborhood and I thought to myself, my, it has been a long time since I last prepared food inside a giant mechanical dock. Yes, well, of course, as a fellow master chef, you are welcome to make use of my kitchen. That's very generous of you. I believe I... But you may not use my wooden spoons. The purple ones, they are mine and I need them. Of course, how foolish of me. You know, of course, that too many master chefs spoil the broth. Chef Dinah, I can honestly say that compared to you, I am merely an imposter. Oh, Wolfgang. You are such a kidder. You are too kind, too kind. Stir, stir, stir. Someone's in the kitchen with Dinah. Someone's in the kitchen with Dinah. I have to admit that at first I thought Professor Quack's idea for a spy camera was half-baked, but it turns out to be pretty hot stuff. Stir, stir, stir! I'll leave my chef outfit here, just in case I need it later. Stir, stir! Where do you think you're going? That exhibit is closed. It's all right. I have a key. Oh, well, if you've got a key, then go right in. Ah, the right key. Excellent. See, I told you I had a key. This opening is too small to get through. It'll take someone much smaller than myself to get through. There you go, Walter. You've got to find Dotty Dash, the microfish. You can count on me, Spy Fox.
Look at that cargo. This is Walter Wireless reporting from WeWorld. This car is my ticket to the dream house. This is the only way to travel. Well now, things are starting to look up. What a shocking waste of valuable attic space. I've been told that it's impolite to stare, but in this case, I'll make an exception. That refrigerator is in the way. This is Walter Wireless reporting from WeWork. I can't go there. Oh well, there was nothing good on anyway. Down is only half of the elevator's job. Now I can reach the upper floor. This button operates the elevator. The refrigerator is now in cold storage. This button opened that door. My instinct tells me I'm getting closer to Dottie Dash's location. I can open and close the top drawer with this button, but will it sort my socks? This button opens and closes the bottom drawer. And the $74 million question is, who invented the retractable TV? Close, but no banana. Typically, I would open and close the drawer by hand. Calm, cool thinking pays off. Film at 11. Around and around and down. This is Walter Wireless. Eureka. Astounding. There is a bathtub in the floor, and it looks deep. That closed the floor over the tub. Walter, I'm glad you found me. I've been on surveillance here in WeWorld, searching the airwaves for anything suspicious. I intercepted a smelly message that has to do with some activation code. My equipment went on a fritz before I could get the whole message to you in SpyCorp, but I think it's really important. I'm sure it is, but if it was a radio message, how do you know it smelled bad? Not smelly. Smelly. 
the Society for Meaningless Evil Larceny Lying and Yelling. All right, our evil nemesis. So what was the rest of the message? I need to transmit it to Spyfox right away. Of course. The activation code is Apple Cherry Grape. Got it. Walter Wireless calling Spyfox. Please stand by. Come in, Spy Fox. I read you loud and clear, Walter. Did you find Dottie Dash? I did. I'm going to transmit the activation code Dottie intercepted to you via the Spy Watch. Stay tuned. Apple Cherry Great. I've got it, Walt. Good job, Dottie. Thanks, Spy Fox. The rest is up to you now. Good luck, Spy Fox. This is Walter Wireless signing off. I've got the off switch activation code. Now that LaRoche is in for it. to ride the ride, famous for its pastries of the past. A cream field adventure. It was the highlight of the fair. The attendant refused to let me on because I was not tall enough to go to the turnstile. Turnstile. Other dollar kids laughed at me. I thought that one day it would be I who would do the laughing. <laughs> I am laughing. <laughs> See, it is I who is laughing. Yes. Very soon the evil dog will fully wound. And without the off switch there, there will be no way for anyone to stop me from crushing all the turnstiles and conquering the world! The flytrap is locked in this display cage by this rather interesting lock. Please stand by. How's life, Spy Fox? Well, I got the candy apple, but Agent Lenny gave me a code that's too small to read. Maybe it's too late to shape an opinion. Open your mind. Monkey Penny, out. Good thing I like riddles, or this could be frustrating. It's the off code for the evil dog bot. Apple Cherry Grape. It's the off code for Cakes and pistachios. This thing really does tell you what you've eaten, but it won't let me in, so I guess I need to eat something else. Wearing these rolls. Great. It's the leaf from Lenny the Informant. That won't do me any good. I can see a star, a square, and a circle on this leaf. With the right combination, this lock would be a snap. I did it! Oh, thank you, sir. I'll just replace that atrocious flytrap with his beauteous rose. Nicely done. I can dispose of that flytrap for you. How polite. Obviously, you're a fox with home training. Yes, I am housebroken, thank you.
everything looks rosy behind a pair of rose-tinted glasses. What a great way to view the fair! These binoculars work swell. It's fun to look at things close up. There's nothing like relaxing with a pair of binoculars. <laughs> what a great way to view the fair! There's nothing like relaxing with a pair of binoculars. These binoculars work swell. It's fun to look at things close up. There's nothing like relaxing with a pair of binoculars. It's fun to look at things close up. See that goon breathing into the analyzer. Something's appearing on screen. It looks like pineapple right side up kick. That breath analyzer is checking for the aroma of pineapple right side up kick. I just need to eat some pineapple right side up cake and breathe into that breath analyzer and then I'll be able to get in that evil dog pot. I can use this talk balloon to gather information about the breath analyzer food pineapple right side up cake.
Do you have any pineapple right side up cake here? Nothing like that here. Only food on stick. You should try the Chateau La Roche restaurant. Try a restaurant, hmm? Is there anything you can tell me about pineapple right side up cake? Try the restaurant. Okay, thank you. Go right in, Maurice. Can you prepare pineapple right side up cake? Why, I won the French Cooking Medal of Honor for my pineapple right side up cake. Well, of course I can make it. Well, that is, I could make it. But I only have one pineapple right now. Can't you make it with the one pineapple you do have? Absolutely not. Good pineapple right side up cake must be made with exactly two pineapples. Here, you can take this one and if you can find another exactly like it, I'd be more than happy to make you some pineapple right side up cake. Thanks, Chef. Two pineapples, eh? I'll get those for you on the double. Clone it? You got it. Got one, one, two, clone it. I have this pineapple. Don't come running to us with your trouble. I think he wants us to clone it, doll. Very well, Lee. You do the honors. No. After you, I insist. No, please. After you. I'll do it. Don't touch that. Isn't that amazing? Yes, but does it do julienne fries? You can always tell what a customer is not going to buy, Lee. You speak the truth, doll. Go right. Here you are. Two big, juicy pineapples. Wonderful. How exciting that you should find two so identical! They appear to be exactly alike! Perhaps they're related. The secret to gourmet cooking is careful mixing of only the finest ingredients. Hopefully we'll have the opportunity to try that one of these days. Voila! Oh, thank you! My breath should now be potent enough to get me past that electronic sniffer and into the secret workings of the giant robot dog. Stir, stir, stir! What do you know about that? Pineapple right side up cake did the trick. Now I can come and go as I please. La Roche's breath analyzer was no match for a clever international spy like me. I must be in the belly of La Roche's evil beast. I should have a look around. Look at them. The fools are unaware that by simply entering the fair, they are making possible my plans for world domination. 
At the end of the fair, they pass through a turnstile, which rotates a series of gears beneath the admissions gate. These gears, in turn, rotate a giant underground thread screw that passes below the fair to the base of my cleverly disguised giant robot dog. From there, another series of gears turn, spinning the drive shaft, which turn, yet more gears that wind up the massive spring that will power my unstoppable, evil dog bot. When the one million tourists come to the turnstile, my evil dog bot will be completely wound. And then, I will unleash the dog bot on the unsuspecting world and conquer it in the name of Smelly! <laughs> Holy Roach, that is a good one. This button controls feeding time for those mutant Venus flytraps. I wouldn't want to be in the same room with them while they eat. I'm blinded by the light. I need something to shield my eyes. Here's where I keep my spy gadgets. I don't want that welder to see me. As long as that welder is looking over here, I won't be able to make it to that ladder before he sees me. What can I do to get those goggles? Hmm, that welder turns his back on the goggles every time something comes down the conveyor belt. I wonder if I can get him to stay at the conveyor belt longer so I can get those goggles. Here's where I keep my spy gadgets. It's my alarm deactivator. When the welder is looking over here, I don't... makes the conveyor belt go faster. I have the goggles. I believe these are yours, Kate Cod. My lucky goggles! I can't believe my eyes! Ugh, everything sure smells a lot different with these on. You mean, looks a lot different, don't you? No, smells a lot different. Where'd you find these? Sorry, they've been in my pocket for a while. where I keep my spy gadgets. Can I borrow your dark goggles, Cape Cod? 
Heck, son, you can have them. I don't need them anymore. Best not to use them for flying out of a cannon, though. Thanks, that's good to know. UV rating 750. These should show me the light in a good way. The light is bright, but this spy is brighter. I keep much. That won't do me any good. That won't do me any good. I've never seen so many flies before in my entire spy life. When that jar opens to feed those fly traps, they must really open wide. That won't do me any good. Those fly traps are a lot like the one I got from Plantworld. That's not going to do me. This button controls feeding time for those mutant Venus fly traps. I wouldn't want to be in the same room with them while they eat. Here's where I keep my spy. That won't. That won't do me any good. Here's where I keep my spy. That's not going to do me any good. That looks just like the perfect place to set this mutant Venus flytrap. that mutant Venus flytrap prefers to eat flies instead of off switches for giant evil dog bots. I have the off switch. La Roche's evil scheme is crumbling. Soon my diabolical plan or reach a steam fruition, I will be unstoppable. For who or what can possibly stand up to the onslaught of a big giant mechanical dog robot? My sophisticated machine of menace will march across the surface of the earth and claim it in my name. People will shout my name to the skies. Le Roche! Le Roche! Le Roche! And I will say, yes, what is it? All the world leaders will sit up and beg for mercy. It's quite an evil plan, no? <laughs> Here's where I keep my spy gadgets. 
It's the stealth back. That's not going to do me any good. The opening and closing of that door must be controlled by some sort of fingerprint recognition device. I wonder what would happen if... A picture of La Roche. Hmm. I'll bet if I want to get into that room, I'll have to find a way to get a copy of LaRoche's fingerprint. Go right in. Oh, gracious me. Oh, my oh dear, oh dear, oh. Excuse me, what's the matter? I don't have a single fork for Mr. LaRoche's dinner, and he gets so surly when he has to wait for his food. Well, you know the old saying, surly to bed and surly to rise. Ah, that's LaRoche's dinner? Yes, spit-roasted boot bernays. Don't tell me, the sauce isn't... Oh, yes it is. Ugh. I think I'm going to be sick. Now where are all those forks? Here's where I keep my... Here you are. It so happens I carry a fork for just this kind of situation. A fork? I've been looking all over for one. I learned in boot camp it pays to have a fork at all times. Thank you. I'd better get this spit roasted boot bernays out to Napoleon the Roach before he starts acting like a heel. It's only a matter of time now before I have La Roche's prints. <laughs> Spit roasted boot bernays, my favorite dish. This boot was made for eating. And that's just what I'll do. Pretty soon that boot is going to be inside of you. There it is. Now I'm almost ready to give La Roche the boot. And I don't mean for dinner. A little tough, but still good. <laughs> Come to the kitchen with Ty. Let's give this a try, shall we? Like the old song says, a spoonful of LaRoche's fingerprint helps the steel door go down. That must be where I need to set the off switch activation code. It's the off code for the evil dog bot. Apple cherry. It's the off code for the evil dog bot. Apple cherry grape. That must be the on switch for the evil dog bot. I bet my Aunt Beatrice sponge cake that that is the on switch for the evil dog bot. I'm positive that that's the on switch for the evil dog bot. Believe you me, that that is where the off switch for the evil dog bot goes. At last, the off switch is in its place and the activation code is set correctly. Finally, no one 
million customer has come to the turnstile. The dog bot is now fully operational. Let's hit it! I don't think this is a good sign. Buffalo Roach has earthquake insurance. Dog bot, sit. What? Spy box! You called? LaRoche, your evil days are over. I don't think so. The sun has not yet set. Go in after it. Always buckle up. You almost caught that Napoleon LaRoche, Spy Fox. Once again, you've gone above and beyond the call of duty. Thank you, Chief. I present to you the Economy Size Award of Eternal Excellence. Thanks, Chief. It was all in the line of duty. Up 
box who's beyond reproach Gizmos and gadgets go When the bad guys come to call on him You know he'll even the score When times are uncertain and mischief's afoot And baddies are moving about The fox in the tax will give evil the boot Spy cars are coming to call Spy Fox! He's the guy with the moves and the smarts to solve every crime Spy Fox! He's the fox with the gadgets You know that he'll win every time Spy Fox! So run and hide, you baddies Here he comes for Who's beyond reproach Gizmos and gadgets go When the bad guys come to call on him You know he'll even the score When times are uncertain And mischief's afoot And baddies are moving about The fox in the tux Will give evil the boot Spy cars are coming to call. Spy Fox! He's the guy with the moves and the smarts to solve every crime. Spy Fox! He's the fox with the gadgets you know. Somewhere in the Scottish Highlands. Oh, you're right awful there, laddie. Maybe so, but the smoke's on you, laddie. You mean the jerk's on me, don't ya? Can we stop that? Like I said, the smoke's on you! I've infiltrated the bad guy's base. Now I need to find my informant. He has vital information that I must get back to Spy Corps. Monkey Penny said he would be hidden in here, right in front of my face. It's moving counterclockwise. We must be in the Northern Hemisphere. Look behind the mirror. I don't normally look in other people's medicine cabinets, but I am a spy after all, and I'm on a mission. Aha! Roger Bohr, Spy Corps King of Covert Capers. Yes, and I'm very good at hiding too. 
I hope you've got the cure for the common criminal in there for me. Here, take this lipstick. Sorry, that's not my shade. I'm an autumn. It's not really lipstick, Spy Fox. There's a top secret message hidden in it. You need to get that to Spy Corps on the double. On the double, eh? It must be important. I certainly hope so. One more thing, Spy Fox. Quack sent this for your getaway. It's a rocket-powered origami skateboard. The directions are on it. Good luck. I'm out of here. Wow, this place is crawling with bad guys. I'm going to need some serious spy action to get through them all. This rocket-powered origami skateboard looks like it's going to be fun. To make the rocket-powered origami skateboard, I need to follow the folding order of the different colors on those instructions. That did it! Now I'm rocket-powered and ready for action! A giant aerosol hairspray can has been spotted orbiting the planet, and it has unleashed a seemingly endless spray of aerosol directly at the ozone layer. At this rate, that aerosol can will destroy the ozone in a matter of hours. Chief, I retrieved the message you sent me after. It's in the form of a lipstick container. The message is probably chemically infused on the outer casing so small we'll need the Super Spy magnifying glass to see it. Did you look inside the lipstick container, Spy Fox? Incredible! Someone put a message inside the lipstick. Ingenious in its simplicity. What does it say, Spy Fox? Please help me. Signed, Plato Pushpin. Of course! Plato Pushpin is the top expert in cosmetic rocketry. He must have information that can help us stop this diabolical orbiting ozone eraser. He was last known to be working for reigning cosmetics queen Poodles Galore. Spy Fox, you need to go to Poodles Cosmetic Factory and talk to Plato Pushpin. I'm on my way. I assume Monkey Penny and Quack have already set up Mobile Command Center there. Of course. Here is the number of the song you need to play to get you in. Good luck, Spy Fox. Luck has nothing to do with it. Somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Now I'm really on a roll. So this must be where Poodles Galore has her factory. The first order of business is to rendezvous with Quack and Monkey Penny at the mobile command center. The lights are all out in the pizza shop. Oh well, I had pizza yesterday. What a cool jukebox!
That's not on this jukebox's playlist. I was a guppy swimming deep in the ocean. So confused and sad, so full of emotion. And then one day an old car. It says patches. How's it going, sport? Do I know you? How do you know my name? It was a lucky guess, I guess. Yeah, whatever. Why are bowling shoes always some strange two-tone color? That's to keep people from stealing them. You wouldn't want to be seen outside a bowling alley with them on, much like golf shoes. Can I have that interestingly colored bowling shirt, Sport? Yeah, sure. It's just your color. It's on the house today. One for customer trades welcome. Have a nice day. Thank you. where I keep my spy gadgets. I think I should wait until I'm actually in the bowling area to put the bowling shirt on. I'm in the pro shop right now. Just laugh it off. Learn to live and let cry. Now this is a fashion statement, and it's saying, hey, look at me, I'm a bowler. I learned that one back when I was on the Spy Corps bowling team. I think it's best to only wear bowling shirts when I'm in a bowling alley. They don't let you swim on through. So if your pal gets scooped. The lights are all out in the pizza shop. Oh well, I had pizza yesterday. C5. I need to use this song code to get into mobile command and... <laughs> now that's music! <laughs> Floating high above the bowling alley is Mobcom Spy Corps Mobile Command Center. You've really taken the mobile command center to new heights, Monkey Penny. Glad you could drop up, Spy Fox. We believe Plato Pushpin, the cosmetic rocket scientist, has been abducted by Poodles Galore. He's the only person with the knowledge to stop this orbiting aerosol can. But be careful, this Poodles Galore is a nasty character. She didn't get to the top of the cosmetics world by using a lot of sugar and spice. Be sure to check out the spy vending machine too, Spy Fox. I've stocked it with a plethora of useful gadgets. And don't forget that you can call me anytime on your spy watch for additional information. Thanks for the brief debriefing. The Duck Blind. What's the insight on this gadget, Professor Quack? You simply put the duck blind on like a hat, and it renders you invisible to all ducks. Hello. This I've got to see. Hey Quack, what's for dinner? Well, I was... What? Hey, who said that? Out of sight! This should come in handy. That's where I keep my spy gadgets. The Grappling Granny. What's the deal on this doll, Quack?
This doll will allow you to swing over dangerous obstacles. Just give the doll a quick squeeze in the middle and watch as its teeth shoot out of its head, firmly clamping onto anything made of wood. Well, I'm certainly not above playing with dolls. Not if the mission requires it, that is. These blueprints are rich in vitamins and minerals. The Spy Rust Buster. What's the breaking news on this gadget, Quack? This gadget comes in a handy one-use spray can. Just spray the corrosive formula onto any metal and watch it turn brittle with rust and fall apart. Bust with rust. Good one, Professor Quack. These blueprints provide me with all the fiber I need in my diet. The Spy Toaster. What's the spy action on this gadget, Quack? You can use this spring-loaded gadget to pop yourself up to 20 feet into the air. Just hop into the dual foot slots, engage the timer, and off you go. Pop goes the spot. Ingenious, Quack. I shouldn't have had lunch before this mission. The lights are off, so they must be... It's the gate to Poodles Galore's Cosmetics Factory and it's locked. That looks like a keycard device. Through the use of deductive reasoning, I bet I'll need a keycard to get through that gate. Monkey Penny, did I ever tell you about the time I went undercover as a hot dog vendor? No, what happened? I couldn't cut the mustard. I went to a wig shop the other day. Oh, did you get a wig for a special disguise? No, I walked out. I didn't want to pay. Mobile? Please stand by. The mission is going a little slow, Monkey Penny. Do you have any advice? Remember to talk to people. They often provide clues. Excellent advice, Monkey Penny. Thanks. Did you know that a crude form of bowling can be traced all the way back to 3200 BC in Egypt? My, aren't you a fountain of trivia? I already have four gadgets. I'll have to put one back if I want a different one. I have to put a gadget back before I can take another. Back in the vending machine with this spy gadget.
a spy bowling ball. How does this gadget work, Quack? And don't spare any details. Say you need to get a secret message or something that is attached to a normal bowling pin. You simply toss the bowling ball towards your target and it will scoop up the pin and return it right to you. Brilliant, Quack! Another strike! These blueprints provide me with all the fiber I need in my diet. I should only use the spy bowling ball on a bowling lane. I should only use the spy bowling ball on a bowling lane. Excuse me, aren't you poodles galore? That is right. Are you the fourth member of our bowling team? Eh, uh, yes. Yes, I am. Where is your bowling shirt? You must have a proper bowling shirt. How uncivilized. I'll get right to it. There's something fishy going on here, and it's not my deodorant. I should only use the spine bowling ball on a bowling lane. I'm ready for some serious bowling. If you were seriously on my team, you would have the correct color shirt and a name patch that matches the name on our roster. Here's where... I think I'd rather have that bowling shirt with the pink on it. They all have pink on them, pal. Have a nice day. Thank you. It's a free name patch maker for bowling shirts. Oops! I need to insert a bowling shirt before I can make a name patch. That... This bowling shirt fits perfectly into the free patch machine. How handy! That patch machine works great. I can insert a shirt and change the name anytime I want. I might need that bowling shirt. I'd better take it with me. I'm ready to bowl. Darling, you have the right shirt color, but the name on your patch is wrong. You must not be on our team. That's a pretty keen bowling shirt you have on. Do not bother, Ace or Champ. They must stay mentally prepared to bowl. Let's get bowling. You are not on our team. Your shirt is the right color, but the name on your patch doesn't match the name on our roster. Goodbye. It says, Ace, the name on that roster matches the patch that Big Bowler has on his shirt. It says, Champ, that Big Bowler has a name patch on his shirt with that name on it. It says, Harry, I bet that is the name of the Bowler Poodles is waiting for. It's a free name patch maker for bowling shirts. That's an interesting name to put on my bowling shirt. Go! <laughs> 
That's the third ugliest bowling pin I've ever seen. Wait a minute. That's not a bowling pin at all. It's Plato Pushpin, the renowned expert in cosmetic rocketry. It looks like he's about to get bowled over. I've got to save him somehow. Excuse me, Ms. Galore, but I'm ready for some serious 10-pin action. Shall we bowl? Finally! You go first. I want to savor this moment. Well, that was fun. Time to split. Pushpin! He is gone! Ace! Champ! He must have Pushpin! Don't let him get away! No! He got away! No matter. It is too late now. Champ! Ace! Back to the factory! It's time to really heat the plate up! Thank goodness you got my message. I thought Miss Galore was going to make a 10-pin split out of me. She caught me before I could get the final ingredient for my congeal pill. It's the only thing that can stop her now. Sounds like a bitter pill to swallow. Just tell me what you need. I still need an unchewed wad of chickle. Chickle is a gummy substance that comes from the jungle. One prickly pear pizza. A freshwater pearl farmed only in the lake. And the final item I need is the aerosol particle diameter number, or APD for short, from outside the orbiting aerosol can itself. The APD, eh? How am I going to get that with a super spy mess in a mess? Aha! Ow! Poodles has a rocket ship locked in her factory. Perhaps you could borrow it. Here is my key card to the factory. I'm on it like a cheap suit. I'll get these final ingredients for you, Pushpin. Or at least get a bad sunburn trying. I'll have the spy car fixed lickety split. The four destinations you need are programmed into the spy car computer. I'll leave it for you in the street below. Thanks, Quack. It will be good to have my spy wheels back. The Spy Pearl Detector. What does this gadget do, Professor Quack? Use it on a bed of oysters to find a pearl. The light will flash faster and faster as you get closer to the pearl. Great. There's nothing worse than muscling a bunch of mollusks for one little pearl. These blueprints provide me with all the fiber I need in my diet. must have fixed the trans-Google gear. Now I'll be able to travel across the globe spy style. My spy watch is beeping. Monkey Penny must have some important information for me. Please stand by. What's the latest news, Monkey Penny? We've placed Agent Roger Bohr inside Poodle's cosmetics factory to gather information. He left here wearing a darling red wig. That is a darling red wig. Thanks, Monkey Penny. I'll keep an eye out for him. Keep us posted, Spy Fox. Monkey Penny out. This spy car is a miracle of modern spy technology. Quack programmed it with all the destinations I need. With the push of a button, I'm off. Ah, the jungle. An ancient and complex ecosystem teeming with diverse life. Home to more than half of the world's plant and animal species. And it's really hot here, too. That's quicksand. If I'm going to get to the other side, I'm going to have to go over it, not through it. There aren't any ducks I need to hide from here. 
The grappling granny won't do me any good. It's the... I don't see anything I need to bust. The Painted Desert. Such landscapes have inspired many artists, such as Georgia O'Keeffe and George Harriman. Wow, this is quite a bee farm. It's called an apiary, honey. My name's Fox. Spy Fox. Have we met before? I think I met you at the World's Fair. Or it could have been on the Greek Isle of Acidophilus. My name's B. B Bear. Is there anything I can get you, honey? Say, for instance, honey? Just let me know. Thanks, B. I will. Can I borrow your beekeeper hat? Why do you want to borrow my beekeeper hat? You never know when a beekeeper disguise might come in handy. Well, I don't know. I don't want to be a party to any malicious mischief. Not to worry. I'm a certified good guy spy and will use it only in the process of saving the world. Okay, if it'll help save the world. Here you go. Thanks, B. You must really like honey. Are you kidding? I love honey. And anything honey flavored. You know what I mean, honey? I think I get your drift, B. What brings you to the desert? Prickly pears. I love them. Prickly pear pudding. Prickly pear sandwiches. Prickly pear pizza. Prickly pear gumbo. I get the prickly picture. That diverted the water into this calm little reservoir. I've diverted the river into this nice, calm reservoir. The river is now flowing into the reservoir. Beekeepers tend to their bees can go into the prickly pear ranch. How do you know I'm not a beekeeper? If you were, you would know that all beekeepers must wear their beekeeper hats. You mean I'm not wearing it? How silly of me. I'm going to have to wear a beekeeper hat to get into the prickly pear ranch. Bee's beekeeper hat fits perfectly. That guard was no match for my clever beekeeper disguise. Hmm, that board must be caught on something. It's vital to my mission to get a prickly pear. This one should be good on pizza. I wonder if they de-prickle these before they go on the pizza. Stop, you prickly pear never! The rules say that all prickly pears are remain in the prickly pear ranch! Couldn't I keep it just this once? I really need this prickly pear. Sorry, pal. Have a nice trip. See you next fall.
I can now get the prickly pear pizza pushpin needs for the congeal pill. I wish my tux had a prickly pear pocket protector. This thing smarts. Ah, the lake. The freshwater pearl farm must be on that platform out in the middle. Avast, matey! I need a ride out to the pearl farm. The fate of the world depends on it. Empire State Building? Won't find that around here. I don't think that fisherman heard a word I said. I can't use the grappling granny there. It's the rust buster. This is some freaky shack. Can I help you? Eh, just looking, but thanks for asking. What sort of products do you sell here? I don't sell anything! Wow, that's gotta be bad for business! Pork rind sole pizza. In a place like this, the sole could refer to the bottom of your shoe. I'll pass. Sea cheese special. No thanks. I'll stick to pancakes. Hello, my name's Fox. Spy Fox. I'm on a mission to save the world. Well, good for you. My name's Pia the Donut. I'm only working here until my acting career takes off. Pia, I'm in desperate need of one of your prickly pear pizzas. I'm afraid the shop was burglarized last night and you'll never guess what they took. Well, the way things are going, I guess all your prickly pears. That's right. And the only clue they left behind was a torn piece of pink cloth. But if you brought me a prickly pear, I'd be happy to make you a pizza with it. Here you are, Pia. A juicy prickly pear fresh from the desert. Can you bake me one of your special prickly pear pizzas now? Of course. I'll have that ready before you can say... Hooray for Hollywood! There you are, Mr. Fox. Freshly baked prickly pear pizza with extra simulated cheese. Mmm, yummy for your tummy. Thank you, Pia. It's just what the scientist ordered. You mean doctor? No, I actually do mean scientist. Meanwhile, orbiting high above the Earth, Poodle's Galore's aerosol onslaught continues. In only a matter of hours, my special blend of aerosol will have completely destroyed the ozone. The sun will then beat relentlessly down upon the Earth. <laughs> All the little darlings will scream for my sunscreen. Poodle's brand SPF 2001. Then I will not only be the queen of cosmetics, but the undisputed ruler of the world. <laughs> Oh, 
I'm starting to shine. Hello, my name is Fox. Spy Fox. I'm on a secret mission to save... My name is Cookie. I'm a Cookie Scout. I bet you must really like cookies to be a Cookie Scout. I really like the official Cookie Scout stunt bike I'm gonna get when I sell all my cookies. That's what I like. Well, I risk bee stings and scalding hot cheeks, but I've got the prickly pear pizza. Push pin! That was a vital ingredient for the congeal pill. Yes! Without the pizza's nourishing qualities, I would have collapsed with hunger. Now all I need is... Kickle from the heart of the jungle. A freshwater pearl found only in the oysters of the lake. The APD or aerosol particle diameter number from the orbiting aerosol can itself. And then I can complete the congeal pill. It's the ingredient list for Pushpin's congeal pill. I still need to give Pushpin Shickle from the heart of the jungle. The aerosol particle diameter number, or APD for short, from the orbiting aerosol can itself. A freshwater pearl found only in the oysters of the lake. Then I'll have found all the ingredients to make the congeal pill to stop the orbiting aerosol can. Play-Doh Pushpin's keycard worked like a charm. Er, a key, I mean. I'm in the cosmetics factory. I have two objectives in here. One, borrow Poodle's rocket ship. And two, find the informant Roger Bohr. Good old numbers. I can't hear what those guards are saying. I need some additional hearing aid. I'll save this spy gadget for later. The canned laughter. How does this gadget work, Quack? Just pop the top and toss. The sound of laughter will be everywhere. It can be very distracting. I guess you could say it creates a laugh riot, eh, Quack? Yes, I guess you could say that. These blueprints provide me with all the fiber I need in my diet. Maybe this spy gadget will come in... The Spy Mint. I'm sure this does more than fresh and breath. It's really a glow-in-the-dark Spy Mint that will light up dark rooms. You simply bite into the mint to ignite it. Not only is it minty fresh, but it works underwater as well. An underwater glow-in-the-dark fresh maker. Ingenious, Quack. These blueprints are rich in vitamins and minerals.
back in the vending machine with this spy gadget. The sticky stun bun. How does this caramel confection work, Quack? You simply toss the caramel-coated spy gadget into a crowd, then get away fast. When the stun bun goes off, it will stun everyone within 10 feet, leaving them dazed and confused for weeks. Quack, that is by far your most stunning gadget yet. I shouldn't have had lunch before this mission. must be some sort of security device. How diabolical! That device is some sort of hair security scanner. I'm going to have to get an appropriate hair of the day wig disguise if I'm going to get past this crazy contraption. I can use this talk balloon to gather information about the hair of the day. Wow, this machine looks like some sort of scalp enhancement device, otherwise known as a wig making machine. Good old numbers. I can't hear what those guards are saying. I need some additional hearing aid. Well, this room is head and shoulders above the rest. It must be some kind of makeup test room. Psst, Spy Fox, over here. Eh, uh, who said that? Over here, the redhead. Roger Bohr. Wow, you had me wigged out there for a second. Sorry, there's been a lot of hairy stuff going on around here. If you need any info about Poodle's Cosmetic Factory, just ask. Roger, Roger. I don't suppose you would know what the hair of the day is. The hair of the day is a yellow pompadour, accented with a delightful butterfly accessory. Got it. Thanks for the hairy information. That screen shows the different accessories I can add to my wig. That screen shows the different styles of wigs this wigged out machine can make. That's a pompadour style wig. I bet this wig will look nice on me. Not bad, but I think I'll keep it in my pocket until I really need it. Yuck! Talk about a bad hair day. My wig disguise got me past that hairy scanner. I'll leave it here so I can get back out. I hope Quack's sticky stun bun has more than flower power in it. <laughs> uh, 
the sticky stun bun worked. Quack's caramel coated confection has left those guards stuck in their tracks. This rocket ship is locked up tighter than a really tight thing. I'm going to need a key to get into it. It's a safe, and it looks like it contains a key. I just bet that's the key to Poodle's rocket ship. I'm going to need that key to get into Poodle's rocket ship. I have to get this safe open. I'm going to need that key, but I'll come back later. Now this is going above and beyond the call of duty. I think I'll leave this wig here for safekeeping. Wearing the duck blind won't do me any good. There aren't any ducks around. I can't use the grappling granny there. I can't use the rust buster there. That's a great megaphone. Thanks! I use it to shout at potential customers because I can be hard to hear! What kind of potential customers? Potential cookie buyers! I only have to sell three more boxes of cookies to get an official Cookie Scout stunt bike! Completely tricked out with foot pegs, banana style saddle, alligator grips, and this thing in the handlebars that tells time! Wow, that sounds pretty neat! Are you a potential customer? No, I'm a spy. But I tell you what, I'll help you sell your cookies so you can get that bike. Then you won't have to yell through that megaphone anymore. Thanks, Mr. Spy! Here you go! No problem. Why, I remember with... Now get selling! That's not going to do me any good. You really should try these luscious lemon listings. No thanks. As an actor, I really have to watch what I eat. And I really don't see me eating anything like that. Would you like to buy some delicious coconut curry crunches? No, thank you. I'm simply not motivated to buy anything like that. I bet you'd like to buy some honey-baked beet biscuits, wouldn't you? No, thank you. I get to eat all I want working here. And when I'm on the set, the food is catered. It says, free pizza today. Wow, what a great promotion. I bet you'd like to buy some honey-baked beet biscuits, wouldn't you? Sorry, that's not my kind of cookie. These coconut curry crunches really look delicious. Wouldn't you like to buy some? No, thanks. I don't like that kind of cookie.
Can I interest you in some luscious lemon listies? Luscious lemon listies. Sure, I'll take a box. It's amazing how they get such a lemony flavor without using any lemons. On behalf of the Cookie Scouts, thanks, sport. You're welcome. Here you are. I sold one box of your cookies to a very satisfied customer. Thanks, Mr. Spy! I'm one box closer to my official Cookie Scout bike! It was my pleasure. Anything that... The sooner you sell the rest of those cookies, the sooner I get my bike! So time to waste it! Would you like to buy some honey-baked beet biscuits? You must be joking, Mr. Spy Fox. I know what they put in those things. These coconut curry crunches really look delicious. Wouldn't you like to buy some? There is not a single natural ingredient in those. I wouldn't think of it. I bet you'd like to buy some honey-baked beet biscuits, wouldn't you? No thanks, Spy Fox. I'm on a fiber-only diet. Can I interest you in some honey-baked beet biscuits? No thanks. They might make me sleepy, and I have to stay alert while I'm on a mission. There's going to be a bungle in the jungle today! The spy toaster only goes straight up! That quicksand is mucky! I'm going to need a real swinging way to get across it! All right, Granny, do your stuff. <laughs> I wonder if the pattern on top of that pyramid is some kind of code. My name's Fox. Spy Fox. I'm Trudy Fruit. I'm here studying chickle for my PhD in gamatology. But some pink clad pranksters locked all of the chickle inside Chickle P2. There must be some way to get in. The only way in is to set the hieroglyph code correctly. And use the ancient amulet of Chickle P2 on the keyhole. Set the hieroglyph code correctly and use the ancient amulet of Chickle P2. Got it! 
With this talk balloon, I can gather information about the ancient amulet of Chico Pichu. Can I interest you in some honey-baked beet biscuits? No, thank you. I'd prefer something crunchier. Would you like to buy some delicious coconut curry crunches? Oh, I sure would. I love coconut curry crunches. They have the perfect mix of coconut, curry, and crunch. So, if you were looking for the ancient amulet of Chickal Pichu, where would you look? I'd look for it in an import shop. I overheard one of those big pranksters mention something like that. Good idea. Thanks. That's a lovely bunch of coconuts you have there. Thank you. I've grown quite fond of the flavor of coconuts since I've been here at the jungle. Do you know the whereabouts of the ancient amulet of Chico Pichu? I can't say exactly, but I did overhear those pink pranksters say something about an import shop. An import shop? Interesting. I need to figure out this hieroglyphic code to get into Chickle Pichu. I cracked the code! Now I need to use the ancient amulet of Chickle Pichu on the keyhole. Then I can get in there and get that chickle. Here you are, Cookie. Only one box of cookies to go. Hot cake! I can feel the wind in my hair already! You must be... Let's move it! You're not selling any cookies just standing there! The spy ear. That sounds interesting. How does it work, Professor Quack? This ultrasonic eustachian device provides auditory enhancement through ground silica. Uh, it allows you to hear conversations behind solid glass, Spy Fox. That's quite an earful, Quack. I shouldn't have had lunch before this mission.
Well, then he just dropped the entire load of cassavas. Wham! <laughs> My ear is working. Those guards are coming through loud and clear. Miss Galorisher comes up with wacky combinations for the safe containing the key to the rocket ship. Whoever heard of comforting elbow cream as a combination for a safe? Whatever happened to good old numbers? <laughs> the combination to the safe containing the key to Poodle's rocket ship. I'm going to need that key if I'm going to borrow that rocket. I'd better write it down. Oops, I'm going to get an earful from Quack about that. I hope Monkey Penny... Comforting elbow cream. It's the com... That crazy combination worked. I've got the key to Poodle's rocket ship. No safe is safe with this spy around. Boy, Poodle sure doesn't miss a trick. Her rocket ship is locked up tight. We have liftoff. The key works. I'm sure Poodles will be mad that I borrowed her rocket, but it's her own fault for being evil. Sweet sabotage. Look at the size of that aerosol abomination. I've got to stop it before it depletes the ozone layer and everyone gets a nasty sunburn. That is easily the biggest can of aerosol I've ever seen. I've got to stop that onslaught of aerosol because there's no zone like ozone. I'm going to put a stop to Poodle's pernicious power play permanently. Then I'm going out for pancakes. That's not going to do me any good. Talk about Harry's... I'm looking for the ancient amulet of Chickle Pichu. Have you seen it lying around here anywhere? The ancient amulet of Chickle Pichu? When I hunt out exotic props from my headshots, I look in import shops. An import shop. Now that's a good idea. Bye. 
So, if you were looking for the ancient amulet of Chickle Pichu, where would you look? I'd look in an import shop if it were me. But you do what you want. It's said. I bet you'd like to buy some honey-baked beet biscuits, wouldn't you? Are you kidding? Those have nothing but chemicals in them. I'm looking for the ancient amulet of Chickle Pichu. You don't happen to have it here, do you? Dixie's flaming lip gloss. Hmm, that sounds like some kind of code phrase. I need the ancient amulet of Chickle Pichu. Dixie's flaming lip gloss. That must be some kind of code phrase. If only I knew what the correct response was. The rust buster won't do me any good. My spy watch is beeping. I'd better answer it. Please stand by. Come in, Spy Fox. What is it, Monkey Penny? Agent Pins has been dispatched to the desert. She has intercepted a useful gadget from Poodle's cosmetic factory for you. I can't quite make her out. Right, she's in disguise. Monkey Penny out. You're looking sharp, Pins. Ah! It must be 120 degrees in this cactus disguise. Keep your cool, Pins. What hot tip do you have for me today? Spycor intercepted this gadget from one of Poodle Salor's goons. It's a digital makeup compact. We think it's used for deciphering code phrases. Press the eye shade button and it will display the proper counter phrase. Ingenious! And it has all the latest designer colors, too. Good luck, Spy Fox. I'm out of here. Plan B. Would you like to buy some honey-baked beet biscuits? Honey-baked beet biscuits from the Cookie Scouts? The one and only. Of course I'll buy a box. They're so full of honey-baked beet goodness. I can't stand it. Here you are, Cookie. I sold all the Cookie Scout cookies you gave me to sell. Hot bananas! Now I can get my very own official Cookie Scout stud bike completely tricked out with foot pegs, banana style saddle, alligator grips, and that thing on the handle in a tough time! Hi, Mr. Spy! <laughs> Gee, kids are so cute. Loud, but cute. Ooh. 
no one will misunderstand me when I use this little baby. Cosmetic Counter Code Phrase Compact. Pink Poochie Poochie Shadow. White Pants Face Powder. Minty Green Loot Cream. Blue Powdered Put. Corinthian Wrinkles Beat Salt and Pepper Sprinkle. Make a Dish Found at Dixie's Flaming Lip Gloss. Dixie's Flaming Lip Gloss. Pressing that button accessed a counter code phrase. Hot, 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 hot. Here's the amulet. Be careful it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. Don't worry, I'll carry it in my right hand. Remember, you'll need the hieroglyph code as well as the amulet to get into Chickle Beach. Right. Thank you. It's been very interesting talking to you. You're welcome. Have a nice day. The jungle has been the backdrop for many Hollywood movies. The amulet worked. I'm in there like swimwear. No missing ancient amulet or mythic hieroglyph code can keep this spy out for long. Now to find that chickle. Those blades may be sharp, but I've got the edge. Have a dose of Quack's Rust Buster, you bad blades! Quack's Instant Oxidizer literally busted those blades with rust. I found the chickle! It appears to be penned in by that gate. Well, with a little creative problem solving, I'll have that chickle in no time. If this wasn't a spy toaster, I would never be placing anything other than a piece of bread into it. But it is a spy toaster, and I am a spy, so here goes. <laughs> I have my piece of chickle. It takes more than an ancient civilization to outwit spy. Uh-oh. That was close, but I got out of that pickle with the chickle. Chew on that, poodles galore. I was destined to be the reigning baroness of beauty. Even as a child, I knew how to accessorize. As a teenager, I started experimenting with making my own blush and sunscreen. which 
were far superior to the major brand. And from there, Poodles could not be stopped in her rise to the top of the cosmetics world. She was there to take advantage of every major cosmetic catastrophe. The compact crash of 97. The Bay of Polish in 98. But now she has gone too far. What will happen when Poodle's arsenal of aerosol breaks through the ozone layer? Everyone will either baste themselves with my SPF 2001 sunscreen or broil like lobsters. As they say, live and let try. Here is the Chico pushpin. Ah, the Chico! Its gummy quality is vital to the congeal peel. Now all I need is a freshwater pearl found only in the oysters of the lake. The APD or aerosol particle diameter number from the orbiting aerosol can itself. And then I can complete the congeal pill. Sorry about your megaphone there. My name's Herman. That's okay. My friend Cookie was done with it. My name's Fox. Spy Fox. I'm on a secret mission to... Hop aboard. I haven't got all day. Thanks for the boat ride, Herman. Poodle's Pearl Farm. I'm getting close to that pearl now. That was close. That looks like one of Poodle's goons. I better not let him see me. Let's just see how that malicious mallard likes Professor Quack's duck blind gadget. Duck blind, don't fail me now. I walk right past that guard. The duck blind impaired his ocular nerve center. In other words, he didn't see me. I'm in the oyster house, but look at that mountain of mollusks. I'm going to need help picking a pearl out of this pile. This per- 
pearl detector will find the shy shellfish who's hiding the pearl I need. I'm getting colder. I'm getting warmer. I must be getting closer to a pearl. I'm getting warmer. Okay, Oyster, don't be shellfish. Hand over that pearl. Hmm. Eureka! I've got the pearl Plato pushpin needs for his congeal pill. On Poodles Galore's Aerosol Space Station, we find she has called a meeting with the highest muckety mucks of the cosmetic industry. Sable Keen, the top boss in blush. Mary Eyeliner, winner of the 1999 Smelly Award for the perfume You De Pew. Thank you for coming, darling. I invited you here today because together you represent the cup I mean the cream of the cosmetic world. But now, you are to become the cosmetic supplier to the stars! Oh, it's so nice to have those perfume posters out of my pink boodly hair. Now I can get on with cosmetic domination! a fish story, Herman. I had a big yellow fish on the line once, but it pulled out a pair of plastic safety scissors, cut the line, and got away. Could I trouble you for a ride back to shore, Herman? No trouble at all. Thanks, Herman. I had to muscle this pearl out of a selfish shellfish. But here you are, Pushpin. What a superb pearl, Mr. Spy Fox. Now all I need is the APD or aerosol particle diameter number from the orbiting aerosol can itself. And then I can complete the congeal pill. I hope... APD. That must stand for aerosol particle diameter. Pushpin needs that number for his congeal pill. I'll just copy it onto a compact disc for safekeeping. I certainly don't... Here is the aerosol particle diameter number you wanted, Pushpin. Straight from the orbiting aerosol can itself. Excellent, Mr. Spy Fox. That is the final ingredient. Now I can finish the congeal pill. Here you are, Mr. Spy Fox. 
you must toss this pill directly into the aerosol inside the orbiting aerosol can. It is highly unstable, so I would not waste any time getting out of the aerosol can. Got it. Pitch the pill and ditch the can. You should take this with you, Spy Fox. It's a Swiss spy knife. It's got a fork and a toothpick. That will come in handy if I'm ever caught dining without utensils. It also has a pair of chromium alloy high tensile strength wire cutters that can cut through sheer metal. I s- Poodles galore, your dog day of ozone depletion has departed. What? I don't think so. either, darling. Just who are you anyway? Fox. Spy Fox. And in the name of Spy Corps... I hereby place you under spy arrest. Not today, Foxy! I must warn you that I'm an expert in cock-a-doodle foo. Drat. That steel net will keep you out of trouble. Now to finish my cosmetic caper. Well, I've certainly gotten myself into a fine steel mesh this time. I have to get out of this steel net and get that congeal pill back. Maybe there's something in Quack's Swiss spy knife that will get me out of this fine mesh. Uh, maybe I can use the toothpick to pick my way out. Well, that leaves the chromium alloy high tensile strength wire cutters that can cut through solid steel. I hope they work. That did the trick. Now I need to get back the congeal pill. I'm glad today wasn't garbage collection day. This time I'll be super ultra sneaky when I toss this into the aerosol. This time I'll keep my actions to myself. Congeal! Pill? <laughs> Uh-oh. How do you like them apples, Poodles? You fool! The aerosol is highly unstable! The whole thing is gonna blow! I can't let Poodles get away. A crazy villain like her should be behind bars getting the best rehabilitation my tax dollars can buy. Not so fast, Poodles Galore! Never catch me 
now. Not with this impenetrable force field protecting my moon base. I'm snug as a bug and have plenty of time to devise my revenge. Let's see. There's always Operation Beauty Bark. How diabolical. A fingernail recognition device. Uh-oh, I hear a guard coming. My spy watch is beeping. I hope it's not a telemarketer. Please stand by. Come in, Spy Fox. Hello, Monkey Penny. Say, you look like you're in a mess. That's the super mess, Spy Fox. I'm right outside the moon base, but I can't get through the force field. I'll deactivate that force field just as soon as I can. I have to get in first, then figure out the special fingernail scanning device. Good luck, Spy Fox. We're all behind you on this one. I wonder what those lights are all about. I'd better stay out of sight until that guard is gone. This is the keypad that controls the door to the control room. I need to enter the code correctly to open that door. That opened the door. I'm in there like swimwear. This is Poodle's Moon Base Control Center. I need to turn the force field off so Monkey Penny can land the Super Spy Mess. I don't think that's the best use of the canned laughter. I'm going to have to mimic Poodle's fingernails exactly if I'm going to get that device to work for me. There's a room with a surveillance monitor over there. Think I'll do a little sightseeing, spy style. Ow! Oh! The humanity! Oh! <laughs> Pickled potatoes! I've been pummeled by an enormous pink powder puff. What a humiliating trap! Well, there is no way to get to that surveillance monitor without pulling the plug on that powder puff first. Uh. Interesting. That switch didn't seem to do anything. I suppose there is a remote chance that it's a remote switch. That switch must be the off switch for Poodle's pink powder puff pummel device. Now to shut off the... 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 Puff! Oh! Ow! Oh, oh! Where's my stunt double? <laughs> Spy Mint won't do me any good. I don't think that's the best use of the canned laughter. Ah. Uh. That switch doesn't seem to do anything. I suppose it could control something in another part of the moon base. That looks like some kind of closet, but I don't see a way to open it. There must be something really important in...
That funny little switch in the other room must have opened this closet. Those look like perfume bottles. They must really be important to keep locked up like this. And you never know when a little perfume might come in handy. Delicate yet distasteful. I can't use that there. Only a mind tarnished with evil could come up with a powder puff trap like that. I can't use that there. Let's see if spy maneuver number 24, grasshopper on paper, will get me to the puff off switch. Maybe if... That controls the transporter on the walkway. I wonder if the missing electrical component is used to turn it off. That perfume bottle fit perfectly. I think it turned this machine off. Ingenious! That perfume bottle was really a dyadic stopulator in disguise. That pulled the plug on Poodle's pink puff of doom. Now I can continue my mission. Okay, Powder Puff, give me all you've got. Ah! Heh, it was just a little powder. The Dionic Stopulator disguised as a perfume bottle did the trick. Poodle's Powder Puff is out of commission. This must be Poodle's security center. She must have surveillance cameras set up all around her moon base. These buttons scroll through the different surveillance cameras Poodles has set up around her moon base. It's a close-up of Poodle's Galore's fingernails. I need to paint mine exactly like hers so I can deactivate the force field. This looks like an automated fingernail painting machine. How handy! I need to use it to paint my fingernails exactly like Poodle's. This allows me to pick blue with these buttons I... That painted my fingernails and they look pretty. Black, blue. Blue diamonds. Now that's trend setting. It worked! Now to muzzle that poodle for good. Monkey Penny, the force field is down. Stick em! Copy that, Spy Fox. We're in there like swimwear. Hey, that's my... Oh, never mind. What? What is going on? Oh, that chump that turned the force field off! I'm that chump, poodles. This time I'll take care of you myself! I must warn you that I am an expert in cock-a-doodle-poo! Not so fast, Poodles!
<laughs> I am hitting it. Thanks, Monkey Penny. It really wasn't necessary. I was using the Spy Play Possum maneuver. Sure, Spy Fox. Would you believe the Limp Biscuit maneuver? Mm-hmm. How about the Dead Fish maneuver? Mm-hmm. Here, have some hard candy. Spy Fox, for your super spectacular deeds of daring do in destroying the orbiting aerosol can and capturing that pernicious poodles galore, I present you the really big award of stupendous merit. Thanks, Chief. Now what are you going to do? I think I'll take a vacation. I'm dog tired. His life where danger Restart. Dwells. He spent Quit. days in peril. He gets the clues that solve the crime. He always helps his fellow man. He has the gadget to make him cool. He can escape any trap. He's got the gumption that we need to save us all from the pool. Thank you. 